complex topography. Okay, you know, when people think about here. canyons, think about the Grand see. Canyon being Grand this really yeah. remarkable geological like uh, structure. But actually, the largest canyon the in the world is, is a submarine actually. canyon. Yeah. Uh, and that's that uh, makes sense with your actually uh, about one and a half times west. as big as the as the Grand yep. Canyon. Um, and that's the Zenchuk Canyon and, and the bearings that you can Video see. Video swapping so, out. Uh, today's canyon is a, is a little bit uh, smaller feature. We've got about 200 meters or so in, in vertical relief. Uh, we're going to be diving on the north wall of this canyon. Right. Uh, and yeah, we should be touching meters. down at any second Delta now. Delta 16. Um, current depth here is 2,775 uh, meters. Um, we should be touching down uh, close to 200, uh, 2,800 meters. And uh, just a quick note, pretty distinctly uh, the serious. slopes we're expecting Center. to see on the side of the canyon today uh, approach 22, 23, maybe 24 side. degrees. Yeah. And uh, that is similar to what we saw on the top of our mound yesterday and where we saw plenty of exposed like southeast substrate. To southwest, uh, so we think the, the slopes are going to be steep ridge. enough to uh, provide us down with some uh, exposed uh, rock along these canyon walls. Altitude 10 meters descending. And so, yeah, we, we talked about previous dives in the area. So uh, based on an inventory that we compiled of There's previous scientific surveys in the center, area that, yeah. that dates back and to the 80s, like we've got uh, the closest the dive that we can find, uh, or a couple dives by, by the man submersible Alvin um, in 2006, and that tar targeted that. Alaminos Canyon about uh, 25 kilometers east of us. Now, this is an industry uh, site. As, as Mike mentioned, we have an oil rake, and, and there are... Uh, uh, a handful of, of also industry surveys of the area, and uh, so yeah, we're we're touching down here. We'll we'll make a note here uh, on bottom here. Uh, first depth is 2,781 meters. That great. And uh, so our, our ROV pilots, uh, as soon as we get down here, uh, complete a, a series of checks, uh, and once those are complete, uh, we'll proceed to our dive. Which is all stopped for now. Copy that. Come down a touch more. Okay. Holding. Copy. Yeah, 330 looks about right on the sonar for uphill. Yeah, I'll get back on that. Bridge, this is ROV Nav. Just wanted to let you know that the ROV is on the bottom. And I'd like to discuss a bailout plan with you. Um, we're looking at southeast right now, if possible. Excellent. And as we climb up the uh, the face of this canyon, we might transfer it over to south as we get further away from Pretty the opposite canyon bias, face. Huh? What's that? Pretty high Z bias again. Today. Sounds good. Thank you very much. Yeah. Does it feel a little light? Or that is exactly what I'd like you to do. Thank you. <laughs> Some Thanks. of it might be uh, the other kind of yeah, so pulling up, but um, uh, right yeah, a little now, bit higher right than yesterday. Screen, we have a C pen, uh, so that's a penetulation. That downward. Uh, so an octocoral, and that's going to be in the uh, in the genus Umbellula. Uh, very distinctive. Yeah. Uh, sure. C pens are, are commonly found on, a bit on, more. on soft yeah, sediments. There are a few C pens. Copy that bridge. Thank you. Rock pens that are found on hard substrate. North, uh, and it looks like we have a ophiroid or brittle star off to the left-hand side of the frame as well. 
Uh, you may be noticing on the feed that the water looks a little you more can, turbid uh, here uh, than some of our previous get my dives. Out That's of, not uncommon right. in set for uh, that. the base of canyons. Uh, as I mentioned, they're carved out by sediment-laden flows. So you can have so push out a higher sediment concentrations at these levels, but we would expect that turbidity to abate to some degree as we move uh, higher in elevation and move upslope along the canyon wall. And Adam, I don't know if you explicitly said it earlier in your uh, introduction, but of course we're not surprised at all the sediment on the, uh, the floor, the axis of the canyon, since all these sediments are being funneled through here. Um, we hope that we'll see exposed hard substrate as we get onto the wall of that escarpment. Uh, that's exactly right, Scott. I will say that it is nice to see finally some sea pens. We've been traversing a lot of sediment the last few days, but the sea Go pens ahead. have been relatively uh, sparse. Uh, down at this, um, is a very common genus, so um, it's totally expected that we would see them here. Excellent. Sounds good. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and, and the, uh, the ROV is extending its light bars test. right now, so uh, it'll be giving us a little bit better uh, view of okay. some of our objects. They uh, extend those out to either side of the vehicle so, uh, to get a little bit better light CTV's angle off. for the camera. Swing arms are out. Copy, copy that. Uh, so up in the distance, uh, appears to be a couple of holotherians or sea cucumbers and a, uh, also a, a tripod That's fish. A bit. Up to 45. Uh, family of Nocidae. Can you take note that looks like a genus uh, with CTD on the ground fault was 58. Yes, ROV uh, team KOM. Test. We'll, we'll, we'll move and along. So the, the first part of this uh, dive is about KM. a 100 meter uh, transect or so. Are going uh, across a not very well defined ridge, but it, it's kind of broad. You said that was and, 58 uh, k ohm with them on. Once we complete and that, uh, we'll start the ascent of the, the North all. Canyon yep. Wall of Perdido Canyon. Turn it back on now. Okay. How you looking, Copilot? You ready? I'm ready Get to roll. Yeah. Swing arms are out. Had a good uh, delta. Comfortable, comfortably looking uphill. Watch the pilot. Hey, we are done our checks on bottom here. Z bias is in. Our swing arms are out. Um, is there anything you'd like to look at here that you've seen? so far or should we start heading uphill copy that we'll get a move in um yeah i think we'll i think we'll learn a little bit more as we go here so i'll try to keep you updated but um our initial estimate was northeast to southwest um, and it's pretty pretty substantial uh, let me get a magnitude estimate to you after we drive around a little bit. Sure. I think it might change up over that ridge. Okay, Nev, I think we can so get a just short move in. Maybe. Our folks are, are following along. We are 
do 30. Yeah, Slightly we can do 30 to north, start. So almost due okay. north it now. looks like the target we barrier is about 18, 19 We do see a, a, a current there going from right to left of the screen. So to uh, waypoint 2. Kind of east to west. I can't even see waypoint 1. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, yeah. And it's we'll the, start uh, transiting here to our, our waypoint 2. Okay, that's that's about 100 meters so. away from us. Uh, hopefully, Adam, so uh, once one we get here. to the base of that wall, we'll, uh, we're, we'll sure be on the lookout for a couple of rocks or a uh, sample that we can collect uh, at that okay. point. Well, I think, should we just follow the slope? Yeah, that's right. We should expect to see, hopefully, some of those can around around can, uh, yeah. get a sense of uh, what we can expect in terms of the substrate here. Yeah. Because right now it's reading us over here. But yeah, let's, stay where we are. let's put in a... 30 meter move, maybe three four zero. How's that sound? That's fine. Yeah. Because then we, we'll probably hit this ridge and then go up. Yeah. It's like the slope is so mild here anyway. We'll just right. Go until we see something steeper. Yeah, that sounds good. Are you looking for uh, zero decimal two knots? Yeah. That's fine, right? I'll just mention for folks following along that uh, these canyons are not Bridges historical are geological sense uh, in that they are still We'd active like as a, as a pathway for sediment like to move zero. down slope and off into the abyssal Looking plain. For so three zero the sediments we're seeing in the bottom here three, could be relatively four, new or relatively recently deposited. With a speed of zero decimal uh, on previous knots. dive, I've, I've actually descended into canyons uh, in vehicles during uh, turbidity current, so it, it the closest thing I can compare it to is uh, if you're driving your you. car in a blizzard and you're trying to look out the windshield and you, you have very low visibility and see lots of particles flying at you. Yeah. Uh, that's about what it was like. But the interesting uh, thing was you could pull just a few meters up off the bed and be out of it in the clear water. Right so <laughs> I think once we start climbing uh, walls here, we'll, we'll see even uh, better visibility than we see here uh, along the uh, canyon floor. Well, let's go ahead and keep rolling. Copy that, that bridge. Keep things moving. Well, you think it's worth lifting the craft? It looks like it's it's sagged a fair amount. Um, Annie, do you see any unusual flares or anything? Um, I see a flare in the upper right corner of the main ROV camera, but it's it seems pretty typical. It's there. Okay. It would be nice for it not to be, but... <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, well, we'll keep it on it, maybe. I'm out there a little ways, so I'll give it a... I'll give it a turn side to side, see if we see anything. Which, uh, which object is that, the white, uh, longer sponge looking or dead ahead? Okay. I'm going to go ahead and clear the track lines on high pack just to sure. be able to see where we're looking. Okay, video, we can get a zoom. Is this uh, watch lead what you're looking for or the one in the distance there? Okay. So which one was it? Okay, yeah, we'll do this one first, okay. video. Let's hold there until we get a little more steady. Yep. It'll come down just a little bit. Copy that. Slack. Sounds good. Got something sticking out down there. It does. Okay, I uh, should be sitting down here. All right. Is that max in? Uh, not quite max. Okay. 
Stand by one. Okay, let's see if we can get it a little bit more. Decent amount of current. <laughs> Sirius is like uh, wanting to catch the wind and it keeps trying to turn to port. Yeah. Looks like I'm starting to move now. Okay. Did you want to try to get a little bit tighter, Annie? So I can give it a shot. Now that we're steady. There we go. Okay. Do we have any idea what this is? Or? I haven't heard anything from science. Huh. Looks like we have another 10 meters in the move. Yeah, okay. so it looks like we got a when sponge did you, uh, with... Uh, when did they call down to say the move was initiated? What time perhaps was that? an anemone 15, 16. Uh, going underneath 16. it. Okay, so three to four okay. minutes of... Uh, yeah, it certainly looks like there's an anemone the sticking off the, the uh, bottom right and side there. What I was trying to, to decide at first is if uh, the whole thing was an anemone just inverted. Let's the back uh, side. come a little wide. I think, yeah. right yeah. I think that must be a sponge. I think we're good for video. For yeah. Our yeah. Science is done. And, uh, we had okay. another object just to the left if we got a second. Dry lab, this is co pilot. Yeah. Okay, we'll go. Uh we'll go. Let's do a snap zoom here. Okay. Sponge. <laughs> so yeah, here we Copy. we definitely have a sponge. Down 55 degrees. Copy that. Okay. Uh, it's gonna be a. Can we get lasers for just a second? Sure. Go ahead uh, and put lasers on, copilot. Lasers are coming on. Looks like we have some terabyte shells bridge, and sediment you. surrounding it there as well. Right. Was completed Video's at 1522, so we should expect another three or four minutes of movement. Mm -hmm. Yep, copy that. Thanks, Steph. Thanks, video. No problem. Watch the pilot. Hey, would you like to keep lasers on um, until we do uh, more prettier highlight shots, or um, do you just want to request uh, when you'd like to use them? Okay, copy that. So, Andy, just call it out when you want them uh, clear. Okay, sounds good. Looking down 65. Okay, let me come around back to heading here. I think we should probably call in another move. What do you think? Is it done? It stopped a couple minutes ago. Okay. Sirius is still at the end of the swing. Yeah, we can get we another one. 30, mo sure. 30 meters, 330 or 340 again. Sure. 30 meters at 340. Yeah. Same speed, yeah. zero decimal two. That sounds good. Bridge, this is ROV nav. We'd like to make another move, please. It will be 30 meters at 340 degrees, a speed of zero decimal two knots. Uh, also, just to, to give Copy our, our folks uh, on shore 
a heads up. So today's dive uh, will have to leave the bottom around 3 o'clock central time. Uh, so that should give us a nice extended uh, dive here about four and a half hours from now. Copy that bridge. Thank you. Uh, and again, uh, the plan is to, to make it to the top of the canyon wall. Uh, we have about 600 meters of transit. Um, so the first 100 or so are going to be relatively like flat. And then, uh, just we'll above start our climb. Lasers. That slopes about 20 to 25 degrees up the, uh, the canyon wall. Copa, let me know when you start feeling movement again so we can double check those uh, drift times. Sure. We'll do. Thank you. Out, out there in the distance or right here? Uh, right here. Oh, I see it. So yeah. just in front of us is another one of these uh, sea pens or penetulacin. Okay, now tilted the camera up just to touch the 55 degrees. Copy. So these are, these are the octocorals. Uh, so you'll see that the... The polyps will have eight tentacles and that they are all branched. Okay, let's start to come in on that and, thing. Uh, this right. genus is Umbalula. Just maybe fill frame. And then um, in the back there, it looks like we have a, a long leg shrimp. I think we're clear on uh, lasers. Possibly the yeah. genus Nematocursinus. Since we haven't seen many octocorals, I'm going to use this opportunity to talk a little bit about this one, if I may, right. Daniel. Whenever uh, you yes, clear please, with this shot, you want to zoom polyps? Yeah, yeah zoom so polyps one of the things you can good. see is that those polyps, there are four of them, are really quite large relative to um, what we'll likely see later in a dive on colonies that have many, many more polyps and they're all smaller. Uh, you can see those dark circles in the center of the tentacles. That's where the mouth is. There's only one opening into a polyp um, of any uh, yeah, of any of the cnemones, uh, anemones, stony corals, and so on. Yeah. And you see they're ringed by those uh, frilly tentacles that you just noted. There are eight of them, hence the octocorallia. Uh, these are colonial, so all of these polyps are joined at the base and essentially are sharing a common stomach through a series of tubes. And then you see there's that long, slender rod that's extending down to the right. There is an internal skeleton in there, so most octocorals have a skeleton or skeletal rod. It's internal, just like our own skeleton. Uh, that's mostly made of protein, Sorry, maybe yeah. some amount of calcium right. carbonate embedded, but most of it's protein. No more than the camera and wanders all the way on its own. Base, um, it's inserted into the sediment, and there's a little bulb that uh, kind of anchors itself um, into the sediment. So sediment. these are octocorals yeah. that are specialized for living in soft sediment because they have that bulbous base uh, that clear. can essentially anchor them. Okay. Whereas um, if we see our later is. on the slope, okay. we'll see that they tend to glue themselves yeah, to it's, uh, uh, rock and wide. other hard substrates. So it's a well, different that's... form of um, hold back. Excellent. Uh, thanks, Scott. And, and yeah, for 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 those in the general public or that might not work on on coral. So you know, when most people talk about uh, corals, they're referring to uh, within Ninarians, the subclass Anthozoa, and that has two groups, the hexacorals and the, the octocorals. And uh, so in shallow water, the hexacorals are the ones that dominate. The, the, we'd see the, the biggest diversity there. Uh, they uh, far surpass octocorals in shallow waters. But as you get deeper, uh, the biggest diversity is in the octocorals uh, here in the Gulf of Mexico. Um, there's about 260 or so uh, species that have been uh, recorded. Um, and the vast majority of those are octocorals. Um, and so, yeah, they are, are uh, the biggest part of the diversity in the, in the deep sea. Tilting up 45 degrees. Copy that. I'm going to do a snap zoom here video. No, sounds see, good. See what we got here. Couple of anemones. I guess it's uh, worth noting, Daniel, just uh, to add to confusion, um, that broad term corals also refers to a group of hydrozoans, another type of uh, cnidarium. And we've seen some in the water column that we're referring to as siphonophores. Those are pelagic colonial hydrozoans, meaning uh, they swim in the water column. But there are a group of corals called the hydrocorals, and uh, people who dive in the uh, Caribbean may be familiar with fire corals. That's a type of hydrozoan. So uh, basically, it's another nitarian that produces a skeleton. Uh, my close up of the uh, tentacles real quick could be nice. Coral. Sure. Is that quite enemy quite or? Oh, yeah. Okay. From the corals that you were just describing. Yeah, let's go ahead and. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
So yeah, it's a, it's a great point. And, and so this is, uh, uh, again, to kind of uh, highlight the, the two different groups we saw. So earlier was an octocoral, so you could see that it had eight tentacles and that were branched. Uh, uh, these um, organisms here have unbranched tentacles. And if you were, uh, were to Got count it. them, they were in multiples of six. Uh, so they have six-sided symmetry right. here. I think I'm clear. Uh, okay. So yeah, the anemone is our group, uh, part of the, the, the exocorals. And, and to the point you were making, Scott, there about uh, corals that we have. Now this term is, is used really to refer to uh, many different organisms that are in the phylum Cnidaria, so that they have stinging cells uh, in either a polyper or a medusa so stage. So they include the box jellies, the, um, yeah, the, the, the true jellies, yeah. uh, hydrozoans, and anthozoans. Yeah. Um, and so we, we use that term of corals to refer to some groups that are not necessarily like uh, related. So you were, we're making that point about well. the fire corals that are in the, uh, the class Hydrozoa. And uh, the most come, I'll try uh, my head to port a bit. corals, Sounds or when good. people use the word coral, we they mostly uh, refer to several groups within the, the anthozoa. Uh, so we, we use this term kind of loosely to refer to things that are not necessarily closely related and, and kind of an, as, as an analogy. So if we use... Uh, uh, us, the mammals in the class mammalia, our sister uh, should be done class would be the yet. reptilia or reptile. Yeah, so uh, this term it's is like used to uh, refer right. to uh, things that are uh, kind of distantly related. And, uh, let's try to get a, a zoom here on this. Uh, it looks like a Corophenoides. So we got some tether. Copy that. And I think lasers are clear. Lasers and are clear. go ahead and start a zoom video. All right. So yeah, this is a, a rat tail, so family Mercuridae. And uh, the genus is uh, Corophenoides. Come in a little more. So sh I can't really chase it too far, but uh, should we uh, kind of kitty corner up the slope to continue moving north, but also move uphill? I think that would be a good idea. Okay, why don't we do a 310 then? And uh, I'm looking at, uh, okay. at the guide here and a few images from the last expedition yeah, uh, that Tomio and um, identified for us. And uh, it looks like the species Corophenoides mediterraneus. Um, that is commonly seen at depths below 2,000 meters. Would you like to make meters. another move, please? 30 meters. At three one zero degrees, a speed of zero decimal two knots, please. Yeah, I'm starting to get some tether tug. I'm coming back at you. This is going to be a. Uh, uh, that's right. Thank you. Cloud here for a minute. What was the heading of that? Uh, 310. So yeah, as we wait okay. here for this, this uh, substrate to settle. So yeah, that was a rat tail or uh, family Mercuridae, uh, commonly known as the Grenadiers. Yeah, these are uh, primarily found in deep water, uh, above two, uh, deeper than 200 meters, but uh, found as deep as several thousand meters. Copy that, And uh, one Thank of the you. most abundant uh, families in heading? the deep sea. Yeah, just okay. They do include uh, some commercially uh, fish species, like the giant grenadier. So that might be kind of challenging. And uh, these are uh, primarily way, benthic species uh, within this family. Um, yeah, yeah. And also note that a lot of the species within this okay. family are attracted to structures. Uh, they're commonly found in hydrothermal vents, cold seeps. Uh, I'm wondering if this is like a local high here, and then it dips down before going back up slope to the north. Yeah. I, that would make sense from what we're seeing. So we're in this sort of low bait feature uh, that fills the canyon floor, and we just we speculated that it might be a failure from the slope wall, or that it might be a, a down canyon uh, sediment uh, laden deposit. Uh, right now, we're just seeing soft sediments. It doesn't necessarily look like it's a, a failure of the canyon wall, and that we're not seeing any any rock material or larger angular clast here. Uh, but uh, it still remains to be seen exactly what the, the source of this 
Uh, low bait feature in the base of the canyon is kind of tilting down. I think you're in a good position there. Yeah. 40 degrees, 45 degrees in the camera. Had to really fight to get back. Yeah, a lot of current. Yeah. I can update. Looks like there's a sea star just to the left of the right skid. I see that. Watch a pilot. I think a good estimate on magnitude of current would be close to close to a knot, uh, maybe more like three quarter. But uh, we'll keep you updated as we go. I'm sure it'll change as we get up on the ridge. Sure. Okay, video. All right. Just come on in. Clear lasers. Lasers clear. Keep coming. That's something sticking vertically through it. Looks like just part of it sticks up. Okay. Good morning. This is Cliff Nunley uh, at Lumcon, and I'm just uh, while we have some time, I thought I might uh, tell you a little bit about why we chose Perdido Canyon um, as one of the potential dive sites for the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, Expedition 1, obviously, uh, as we're finding out, there's nothing known about it. There's nothing closer nearby, but um, the Gulf of Mexico also has an interesting canyon shipping because Can you come a little wide? Uh, yep. They uh, start mid-slope. They don't really bring stuff down. Doesn't so sound like science is too excited. Okay, we well, can just come forward. Yeah, she's had a couple of loops in the, uh, <laughs> the high pad. We start with wide. very low productivity in the Gulf of Mexico, which means there's already low uh, amount of food that's coming into these systems. So we want to know somewhat, you know, how these What's our water delta? canyons 16, 15, 16. Uh, effectively transport uh, just carbon and other materials down to the sea floor and how that may or may not impact the type of I'm diversity here. and the abundance of life that we're going to see. Side and there. hopefully what we'll find is once we get closer to the canyon could, uh, walls, we'll see a little come bit up more that, to the center that of focusing me and then of food resources. I can get a little more comfortably off the sea Hello. floor. Hello. Hey, Chris. Yeah. How are you guys doing today? Outstanding. So <clears throat> I'm looking at this very nice mud star that you have. And you're fairly deep today, yeah? About 3,000 meters? This ridge, yeah, yeah 2,800. Let's try to do that. Perfect. OK. So like like that like spiny mud there. star that you're seeing it's is something called Dytaster, D-Y-T-A-S-T-E-R. Uh, the other thing you might want to notice before we move on. on the fish? Is that over to the sides sure and around this sandy field, or this muddy field, sure. I should Come say, there are lots of star-shaped impressions. And those are almost certainly uh, something similar to or related to uh, the mud star that we're seeing. Uh, this group of sea stars, the Astropectinidae, makes its uh, life mode by, by digging into the top surface of unconsolidated sediment. And they're uh, essentially uh, predatory. They feed on um, uh, a sort of a small uh, mollusks, clams, and snails. Seems like they usually um, want to They on are the often head. discovered okay. with uh, their okay. their discs Keep filled seven. with mud. They're almost a way of collecting mud on their own because there's so much of it. I mean, they're gouged with it. Sometimes you can just find a huge round like <clears throat> ball of it in their uh, in their disc. Uh, you can you can find all sorts of interesting things in, in the disc yep. uh, when the mud is Keeps there. Changing uh, so um, just great, looks like uh, you guys are focusing on a fish bit. now. So, uh, but I'll leave you with that. And if uh, you guys see another one, um, maybe with different kinds of ornamentation, that might be a different kind of mud star because they're extremely diverse uh, in the family yeah, Astropectinidae. Let so uh, okay. there, there's a lot more to say. They have tube feet that are modified Forward. for uh, digging and so forth. But um, for now, I'll leave you guys to to your uh, uh, charismatic uh, vertebrate-oriented stuff. So, <laughs> and you'll, you'll hear from me again. Uh, thanks so much, Chris. Appreciate that ID. Always happy to help. So yeah, that was uh, Chris Ma from the Smithsonian Institute um, uh, Institution, National Museum of Natural History, 
and uh, we were just uh, getting a close-up there of a cusk eel. Uh, and I'm Roger looking Edwards, through here uh, uh, a bunch of photos that were identified from us from the last expedition, and it looks like it's a cus cusk eel in the genus Basogeigus. So the ship just called in and said that the move was done. So just maybe just a couple minutes of swing on Sirius and then uh, should be settled out. But we can start to turn port more into the slope, find the top of this ridge. Yeah, that move was completed at 1539 and we've been noticing Sirius is at about a two to three minute swing. So Copy. probably right. 41. So for those 40, folks who, who might have uh, joined us um, okay. Just so recently, turn into our the current slope. depth here is yep. 2,700 and right, which um, is too, yeah, pretty far nine, port. Huh? Yep. 94 meters. Did we just, how long have we been on the bottom? Uh, maybe 20 minutes or so. Okay. Have we done any moves up slope? Uh, well, it was really flat when we got to the bottom uh, and we were, we were moving at like 330 up a very mild slope and uh, it started getting steeper. I see. Um, which, you know, now we're looking up slope and it's, you know, looks to be in the wrong direction. What's going on with my to. sonar here? That's a good question. So yeah, I, I want to welcome our shore base science. Um, now, will you? Uh, oh yeah, uh, Clifton, you the uh, who games had on my uh, proposed this general area for exploration. Track. So we talked quite a bit about yeah. why okay. uh, the importance of, of uh, submarine canyons, both geologically and biologically. Just so much sediment. Um, so my Cliff, if you're with us, uh, you want to provide okay. a little bit more so context. You, are you facing? Oh, you can turn more to get the slope, right? Sure. Yeah. Um, I, I think that the, the main reason that we're interested in canyons yeah, is because like we know that they focus uh, food. And, west, and energy is important in the deep sea. The deep sea yeah. is, the waypoints as we can see from the videos already, oh, I see. We don't want to go all the way that way. Yeah. Okay. Life. So you want to so stay west at least. Yeah. No worse. Yeah. To deeper depth. Gotcha. Off, Have we looked at this uh, fish before? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. That are sometimes land -based. Well, visibility is uh, kind of terrible now. Just in view. Although okay. we transport we'll that matter to the deep sea, okay. but in the Gulf of Mexico, we don't get the You're typical canyons yeah. that come right up close to the shore Current because of our 50, 50, the large flat shelf, mm -hmm. especially off the Okay, video, we can zoom in. Uh, right. Not much I can do about all the sediment. The Gulf of Mexico, can we get lasers on for a second? productivity and the amount of food that's created uh, in the ocean is even less. So the interesting part about the... Okay, I'll scan it with the lasers. The, the head of this canyon is already... Uh, close to 2,200 meters deep. Okay, lasers are uh, over. And I think out lasers are clear. Okay. Uh, on a distal plane. Co pilot, so we, we want turn to off understand lasers. how uh, canyons that don't Thumbs get up. this rich source of food uh, from being close to the environment or being uh, underneath the productive area, we want to understand how those canyons uh, uh, focus food to deeper depth. Okay, and I'll then, get it more centered uh, so you can do some better zoom to how that food Great. gets there, but what type of life does that support where you're getting? Soft sediment input, but yeah. where we have been tugged. Let's have just hard uh, try one quick zoom here. Okay. And Stand other by. things. Uh, so, so the reason that we want to see that is in okay, the Okay, there we go. Because we, we studied very much things like the DeSoto Canyon uh, off of Florida and the Mississippi Canyon that obviously is associated with the Mississippi River. And these are very uh, high functioning uh, canyon systems that focus a lot of organic matter to deeper depth. But we don't think that that's what's happening here in the western Gulf of Mexico, where we have ostensibly a very small amount of carbon uh, food resources that's being transported to the, the seafloor. So uh, as we move further, right. we're Happy with that video? we can actually yep, we're good. Uh, compare a lot of these canyons. Uh, to the east is Alamino Canyon. We're full wide. Uh, and then uh, there's other canyons within the Gulf of Mexico that all kind of fit this same typical okay. topography, starting so I'll come back. at deep depth so and I, then emptying onto the abyssal. You basically floor. want to head northwest, that's right. Or actually, we want to head northeast. Right. But that's downhill. Excellent. Like uh, thanks so much, uh, Cliff, for providing that context and also for, for joining us today. Which way is the current coming um, from? 
Sure, just as uh, you were providing that, that from background, the so we were seeing another okay. tripod fish. What uh, we just so came into it. Always, uh, grow ladder. At least we'll have the current facing us, and we'll just go downhill a bit, I guess. Yeah, because we were doing south, we were doing northwest, and that wasn't mm -hmm. happy for anything, really. And yeah, yeah so today's dive is going to add right. diversity to the d yeah. different so habitats that we'll be exploring throughout this expedition. So Even if you know, a gap we had a, a mount yeah. dive, a ridge dive, and today a submarine we'll canyon. I mean, um, but as we continue through this expedition, we'll, we'll explore various yeah, other habitats. Um, we got. Uh, tomorrow another mound feature and then uh, the day after that a mud volcano uh, so over the next two weeks uh, you'll get a nice snapshot of the different environments um, and different habitats that we have in the Gulf of Mexico and it is one of the most complex uh, geological um, slopes in the world and, and so we'll get a nice uh, snapshot of some of the different environments. Okay, do you want to um we can Start. get maybe a, a snap zoom on that object uh, right in front of us. All right. Yeah, watch. Well, so we can try. Where uh, we found that the waypoints are actually heading downhill. Um, from waypoint one to two is downhill. So that's why we are uh, kind of looking off in the dark water. Um, Roger that. But I will try for this. Then we might have uh, be traversing through blue water for a bit. Roger that. Why don't we? Start by moving Sirius to me, just west. Yeah, actually, there's so much delay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's been about two, two and a half minute delay. Okay. Yeah, let's do that. Yeah. Twenty meters at two seven zero. I will call it in. Bridge. This is ROV Nav. Would like to make another move, please? Should we are looking at two zero meters at two yeah, seven zero degrees here on this, uh, with a speed of zero surfaces. decimal We're not two seeing knots, as many burrows please. and uh, excavation features as we, we've seen Should in previous dives. Should keep an eye on so I guess the tracking is we'll pretty bad, but with these see, current series, yeah, might also be a moving away from us. Certainly less of those than we've know. seen previously, that, which may be... Uh, sure. Again, if this is newer deposits, that may speak to the the, the relative uh, age of these these seafloor sediments here. Well, while I hang here, video. Let's do a quick zoom. It's far right. away, but I'm totally out of tether. Might give us a clue. Mm -hmm. All right, here's a zoom from far away. We should be able to get a better one in a minute. Copy that bridge. Thank and you. That looks like another uh, a sponge stock, and uh, the top of the sponge is now gone. Can you turn your heading to me at all, co-pilot? I can. I was trying to give you a little bit more tether. Oh, I see. Yeah, that's okay, as long as you keep me kind of in view. And there's a, a couple of uh, different sponges, but there's this genus Hyalonema, and they're commonly uh, seen. They have we these long see a sponge stock sponges, earlier and then you would have a, on them. Okay. a fleshy part up on so top, I don't know if they and that's now gone. Yeah, let's and go wide. And they're commonly okay. overgrown. With yeah, we got to get ourselves set up better here. Yeah, full wide. Okay. Yeah, okay, I'm... Uh, Pretty much due west. Okay. And also just to, to update our folks, so we our, our pilots have informed us about it, provided a, a kind of estimate the, about uh, the current. The so there's about a, a three-quarter knot current. Start feeling a move um, in about another minute. Going uh, parallel to the to the canyon. Okay, I'm back uh, towards so you. So kind of in the east to west with a uh, direction. Yeah, that's, that's pulling you. Yeah, you can see my auto head was, yeah. was like way down there. Okay. Which would make that up the canyon? So actually, yeah, it's interesting. Usually, we are flow uh, being down canyon, down but down. Uh, yeah. In many cases, these deeper features help up. channelize flow. Uh, that. Uh, so why am I still pulling? A lot of what controls you moving these deep currents is differences in water density. Uh, just, so it, it, it certainly it was only a channelizing ago. a flow. Okay. Oh, there you uh, go. Moving up the canyon. Yeah. I think you'll have to lateral. This, this, yeah, uh, we come down a bit. Give me a little more That's, tether. Uh, yeah, I'm lateraling towards you. You see, pen? There we go. Yeah, that's right. stretched out. I don't want to. Yeah, no, that's okay. Okay. Back. Yeah. I don't want to come down anymore. Yeah. And there we have to left another a tripod. So fish. I guess I noticed these points weren't lined up uphill, but I so that's uh, when they dropped that same them. Same species we I should veto them from now on. Second ago. Oh, I don't think the. 
don't think our contours and the points are really lining up. Yeah. Anyway, but. Yeah. Bob Carney's also noted that the uh, the absence there of excavation burrows okay. could be a result of I the think fact the that uh, we're at deeper depths now. The safest thing to do now is to get us lined up in into the current, even fewer, if I'm just looking at blue water. Pods. I think so, too. Uh, yeah. yeah. But okay. unfortunately, when we did that, I then can't wait at the shallower depths yeah. of our previous dives. So. so I have to drive ahead in your screen. Right. Yeah. Okay. Then you can follow me around. Sure. Altitude six meters. Delta ten. Okay. Out there, I'm looking thirty-five degrees out at you. Okay. Uh, so yeah, just as an update, uh, we had a. I'll keep driving here. Uh, so our navigator has informed us that the, the waypoints are, are there's a little bit of an offset, and so the the waypoints are taking us uh, into deeper waters. Uh, so we might be uh, just moving slightly uh, over blue water, so we we pick up this this feature again. Okay, so again, again, the, the yeah. beginning part water of the dive was uh, along a kind of small ridge-like feature that goes perpendicular perpendicular to the to the canyon. And that's uh, the first hundred meters or so, and that's uh, well, well we'll start seeing the canyon wall. So. That's where we want to spend the most part of the dive today Pushing is on the ahead. north canyon wall here of Perdido Canyon. I'll follow you around as you push ahead. Mm -hmm. Nav, can you let us know when that ship move is done? Copy that. Looks like it should be just about getting completed. Okay. Copy that bridge, thank you. Position move has been completed. Copy. Okay, so now I'm due west. Okay. I'll keep going, lateraling towards you and pushing ahead. I have auto depth on now too. Altitude's eight. those 14 so that'll work mm -hmm. well can we tilt your camera down a little now as sure. I get in a better spot that's 50 degrees okay tether looks good Do a double check watch lead pilot Yeah, so the uh, is just completely downhill from waypoint one to waypoint two. Um, so we we're basically just headed that way, but through blue water. And once we uh, get lined up uh, into an uphill direction, we'll reacquire bottom and continue. There's also a pretty strong current from the northeast here to note okay that's north for me so I'm getting there altitudes 10 yeah so just to update folks uh, uh, we're gonna just transit here off bottom uh, the waypoints were taking us down slope Titan, that looks good and so we'll we'll just uh, head towards uh, the North Canyon Wall here, and uh, also the ROV now, pilots keep, are, are noting uh, uh, down pretty my strong sonar? Uh, currents to the northeast, so up the canyon, uh, so parallel and up the canyon, and uh, okay. She's all the way at the bottom. Noted. Usually we think about. Right. Can Canyons, uh, the currents there are we'll flowing see down, bottom clearly. down the canyons, but uh, you'll from, have to turn uh, it down. from our perspective of being interested degrees. in the, the okay. uh, benthic suspension feeders, uh, and the point uh, is that's, about that's very promising. 45, uh, it looks like. Um, Clifton provided yeah, there a nice introduction the and, and why this is uh, yeah. biologically and ecologically okay. important. Can you zoom out a little? And, uh, 
Yeah. So yeah, canyons are considered so uh, an idea where the base uh, ecosystems where offers. we have larger um, abundances and diversity. And then uh, because of yeah, the so strong currents that we have, uh, often trying to find a lot okay. of um, suspension feeding organisms along the canyon walls. If you want to come over there. And uh, sure. if we are having a little bit of a current moving up canyon, that's um, about 50 that could be indicative of an the, upwelling. Uh, uh, we don't know if that's going ship. on here, okay. but yeah, upwelling is a process ship. by which deeper so waters should we just uh, do a, up along maybe a 30 meter shower. move this way? Uh, um, depths and no uh, that can be really bottom. important for transferring oh, nutrients yeah. from uh, okay. the deep yeah, yeah. up along yeah. uh, slopes, Let's move 30 uh, which meters could also be important for the water. And we'll try to acquire these, uh, canyon environments. So we know that deep sea canyons yeah, act as funnels zero, for uh, upwelling and downwelling degrees. Yes, uh, along our continental margins. So certainly Bridge, that is, is something that could be occurring here with uh, if we see this persistent current we would like to make another move if you guys are all set. Well, that's a little tricky we coming in. We are looking for three zero meters at zero three zero degrees with a speed of zero Welcome. decimal two knots, please. Welcome. You're face downhill with no visibility and a high current behind you. That is correct. Thank you. So yeah, the, I guess the current's a bit to starboard, maybe. Yeah. It's maybe more of a east-northeast current. Copy that, Bridge. Thank you. So I didn't notice it while we were on bottom, but there is a lens flare in the lower left corner of Zeus. There's kind of a double blue line. Is it there now? Yes, it is. I don't see this double blue line. Um, Should um, I tilt up or down? And as we, uh, we we're waiting here, so I try to tilt down and see if part it moves. We mentioned that we're about 150 miles. Yeah, it's um, directly of, out from uh, the end of the uh, sorry, skid now. east of the Texas-Mexico oh, yeah, border. I see it now. And uh, the, um, the border between U.S. and yeah, it's got to be something. It's probably the, the United craft States job. waters. There's actually Once just we, um, uh, about 10 miles get uh, south of us. I'll, uh, uh, so the exclusive economic zone of the country, so that extends uh, up to 200 nautical miles from, uh, from shore uh, of the country, and that is uh, the, the portion where uh, a country has jurisdiction over the resources in, in that area. Uh, so the Gulf of Mexico That's being okay. a really large um, enclosed basin. How's the uh, wind trend We been? have uh, both U.S. is about half of the Gulf of Mexico is in, in, in U.S. waters, and, and that's what we are uh, targeting in this expedition. Oh, really? Uh, Not 24 also, anymore? Uh, Not 24. Of course, portions oh, okay. that are in Mexican right. um, waters, and then there's also wind. a few areas that are in international waters, so in places where you don't have a country that is within 200 nautical miles of, of that water, so those are So now what you're seeing here is seas. kind of how we do our uh, blue water transects. We'll do that the, for a whole day, probably. That, um, uh, serious uh, moves in, ahead. In, in, uh, or stay still, in, in lets the water seas. come at it. Uh, and so and yeah, locks for this the camera at 45 uh, degrees, uh, and we lock focus primarily you know, or delta focus at about 15 meters. Of the Gulf and of then Mexico. the pilot just drives Later around in, the field season, in this view uh, using Sirius as reference. Uh, uh, and part of we try to zoom on bite in, you know, in US little jellies waters, coming at us. Also, uh, doing a little bit of work uh, in Canadian it's waters, uh, uh, as well as around Bermuda. And this is all part of NOAA's Office of Ocean Exploration and Research. Nice try, Chris. A large uh, initiative uh, known as Aspire uh, to do once work you're, um, Once you have everything locked in, in and waters. you're facing up current, it's uh, kind of fun if you have the current on your side and you're moving sideways. Kind of as we set up here, it can be. There is one upper center. Oh, yeah. Let's give that a try. All right. Looks as though we have another five uh, meters. Looks like uh, excuse me, another yeah. ten meters or so to go. Okay, we can go what? Yeah, it's some odd movements. High high pack seems to be a little uh, erratic today. Some pretty high currents and winds. Keep an eye on the winch. 
So our tension at this depth looks like it's going from five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay. Mm -hmm. Video, let's zoom here. All right. And it's appears to be mucus again. Yep. Yeah. So move. Oh, had the CTD workout. Yeah. So I spoke earlier a little bit about these submarine canyon features that we're working in, and I mentioned that they're they're carved out by the repeated movement of density mm -hmm. uh, driven flows down the slope. Mm -hmm. So uh, sediment laden water that moves as a density flow down the slope and keeps reoccupying the same channel and carving it deeper and deeper each time you get a new flow. And one uh, of the questions is to why we always well, how exactly do we get those flows started? And instead of there's a couple different mechanisms at the when we are off of major rivers. This it can be sediment, uh, a heavy load of sediment delivered by the river. So, for instance, off the Mississippi River, we have the Mississippi Canyon uh, that's cut by repeated flows of sediment that are carried yeah. to the Gulf of Mexico by the Mississippi yeah. River that then uh, okay. uh, flows in call, these turbid flows downslope and, and carves a canyon. We in this part of the, the Gulf, we do have some rivers have moving across Texas and northern Mexico that, yeah. that feed this area, and that could be one source of sediment. They don't uh, another source uh, is slumping and collapse associated with the regional other, salt tectonics. And that can uh, oversteepen hourly weather sediments and, things and cause going them so to if you collapse think and then move like down hills, these gravity-driven density flows. In other parts of the world, these flows are often initiated by earthquakes and seismic activity. Now, Copy we're, that bridge. Thank we're you. not very close to an active uh, plate margin here, so we don't see a lot of earthquakes in the Gulf of Mexico Basin, but it certainly is possible, and that bridge, is ROV, yeah. one common mechanism of, of knocking sediment loose and getting yeah, uh, Copa, these I'd be willing to flows head started down. along the We'd seafloor like to make that, move. that ultimately end up carving out these uh, canyon paths. It will be another three zero meters. At zero, okay, out of three, auto. zero degrees, a two, speed seven, of eight, zero decimal two knots, please. Come down with you. Keep our delta okay. about 50. Sounds good. Thank you, Bridge. Maybe a little more. Okay. We've only gone down two meters so far. Altitude six. Looks like we're starting to pick up a little bit more to the north in your sonar. You want me okay. to increase uh, the gain that looks or lower? Pretty good. Uh, yeah, like I guess a decrease it a little. In there as we Copy have the that floor come back in. Get rid of the saturated yellows. Watch lead pilot. Yeah, we uh, saw that we were again uphill on our sonar. We dropped back down, and it does appear to be flat to uphill. Should should be uh, driving forward towards the uh, edge of the canyon now. So call out anything you would like zooms on. How's that look, pilot? Looks good. Okay, I have you at 60 degrees, delta of 17. Okay. I'll keep it there for now. Watch later, this is ROV Nav. Just wanted to let you know that we have moved about 100 meters since we have hit the bottom. Video quick zoom on this white object. Yep. That's a partial zoom. Okay. You can go what?
Uh, so our, our navigator has informed us that we have completed uh, about 100 meter transits uh, since we started to dive. So we did do 30 and then without pausing we did another 30, so you should be yeah. moving. That is correct. Yeah, I don't think I ever really stopped. Yeah. Let me know if you want to do the craft. I can always fire up the HPU. Yeah, we do still have a lens flare. Okay. Yeah, video, let's do a snap zoom center. All right. It's an odd looking thing. Looks like an urchin covered in sediment. Yeah. Snap zooms never turn into snap zooms, do they? <laughs> I feel like really people just like saying snap. <laughs> Gateway to a full zoom. Should really just set down. Yeah, I came down a little. Are facing into the current, hopefully. Mm -hmm. Tether seems to agree. Yes. <laughs> okay, video, you can go in all the way. All right. Co pilot, will you joy lock me here? Sure. It's not a slippery mud, but Relock give me it. a chance to get the craft up. Sure. I'll turn on the HP for you. Hydraulics are on. either way, any? Um, I think I'm probably good on this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just stowing the craft for the lens flare. Sure. I might pull out so I can see the... Copy. If there are the flares. Did that go away? Uh, you tilt the camera up a little bit. Coming up. Copy that bridge, thank you. the camera all the way down and it's still over in the, the lower left but when it's up like this it's good so it probably was the craft yeah okay hydraulics off okay you have your camera back and i'm looking okay. at you 80 degrees okay moving Power ahead down hpu Just so you know, pilot, I adjusted your sonar a little bit more to get rid of the, the saturated yellow. Thank you. Looks good. Hopefully we'll come upon a hard ground soon. It'll totally saturate. I will keep adjusting it to yeah. avoid that. And now that we're off the sediment, this flare is worse than it was before. Ah, good. <laughs> good it. Oh, the, the lights are pretty standard. Well, we'll have, um, the craft is pretty much home. Maybe we'll have the co-pilot change the swing arms a bit. Sounds good. Um. There's a little sediment. I also like to take uh, a chance just to welcome uh, 
our viewers from the general public that might be watching this at one of the public displays, um, perhaps at the Moody Gardens Aquarium in, in Galveston, Texas. So the move has been completed about. Uh, welcome. You're watching two minutes, two uh, live and a half minutes video ago, footage the uh, brought to you from Noah Ship Oceanus Explorer. We're ready for another one. As we are exploring the Gulf of Mexico. Let's yeah. give it a. Uh, you are watching a video um, that's uh, brought to you in real so this time. This strikes to the east. About two miles deep, about 2,800 meters. Um, in the western portion Dramatic. of the Gulf of Mexico. Copal, you want to try and, putting uh, the uppers forward just a little, stow them a little, see if that helps uh, the flare. Broadcast sure. not only at these public I, I uh, think it's probably displays, but the also uh, widely available still the craft uh, to anyone with an internet connection. In more. Like in more? Uh, okay. Uh, you know go I mean? to oceanexplorer.noaa.gov slash Okeanos, and there will be a link there to Next time I sit down for a... Uh, hope you zoom, can, I'll uh, do it join again. Us, uh, okay. Uh, until then, uh, video, you can zoom past the skid and cool. also get rid of the flare. Yeah. So now you can watch, say if he doesn't change his winch or camera angle, you can watch the sea cucumbers on the bottom and see if he's moving. Uh, so it's just to update our, our shore baselines team, so we are starting to see in our sonar, um, uh, it appears to be the, the base of the canyon wall. Again, this first 100 meters or so of the dive, we're um, targeting a, a little ridge-like feature that was running yeah, perpendicular let's this white to the object canyon. Before it floats away. Yep. Okay. Can let that go. Come wide. Watch lead. Any interest in these uh, holothurians? Maybe a quick snap zoom out, just so we got it. Okay. Video zoom on this holothurian. Coming over. Okay, you can start going in. All right. Should probably get lasers on as they come out. Okay. Lasers on. <laughs> okay, we can come out to lasers. Yep. Don't want to turn the snap zoom into a real zoom. <laughs> There's lasers. So, Nav, you think our next move? All right, video is clear. Uh, All right. Again, that. I would say so if that works. 10 centimeters apart. Yeah, I think so. This too. is about 20 centimeters or, or 8 inches. Yeah, let's see. Uphill for my sonar is about 0, 040. 0. Or sorry, I'm 0. Yeah, 0, 025. So say at the 0, 030? Zero. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Another 30 meters? Yeah. yeah. I will call it in. I'll keep an eye on Sirius Center. Yeah. See if that uh Bridge, this is our ROV now. Approaching. We'd like to call on another move if you guys are ready. We are looking for another three zero meters at zero three zero degrees. Yeah, if we can take a, a speed quick of look zero at that decimal two knots, Kay. please. Quick zoom video. Okay, uh, that's come wide zero, three, okay. zero so this degrees. looks like it's in the family Hormatheidae. So thank you very much, Bridget. So these are anemones, so the Venus flytrap anemones. There's there's two families, uh, and they can be differentiated based on the fact whether they have these bumps or not. 
uh, the actinoscyphidae that are smooth and the hormetheidae that are uh, this bumpy. Watch, Lee, would you like a closer look? Oh, uh, no, that, that's oh. great. Thanks. Okay. Brian. I don't think we've seen the fish that was to the left right there. Uh, I don't know if they want it, but. I'll pause on it. We can do a quick zoom here. Mm -hmm. uh, here we have another See that tripod still fish. There. Uh, this mm -hmm. is a different uh, species than the, 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 those with the long fins that we uh, imaged uh, a while ago, so this is going to be in that same genus, uh, Bathypteroids, uh, and the uh, species is uh, Phoenix. Okay, you can take the lasers off. Lasers off. Copy that, Bridge. Thank you. Sat down for a moment while we wait for Sirius. Nice. Okay, it's all you video. That move was initiated at 1615 for your reference. Copy that. the scale pattern. Yeah. It's gone. It is gone. So I adjusted the uppers and the flare was still there. So. Okay. How well, did you get the craft? For now, we're zooming past it anyway, pretty much. Right. So. Okay. I think it might be uh, creeping along a little. Yeah, it's definitely getting steeper. Nav, you can zoom my sonar in uh, to 30. Sonar is into 30. Excellent. Yeah, if we can take a quick look at those large stocks. Those sure. Be, uh, maybe the, the right one. I just noticed one below me here. Yeah. Is that one good? Yep. Okay. So this looks... Uh, Uh, Daniel, can we get the lasers back on, please? Roger that. Do lasers go pilot? Lasers. Engaged. Okay, let's go in, get lasers on the base video. Do you want a full specimen first? Uh, yeah. Okay. I mean, lasers on base with yeah. full specimen. The base isn't that exciting. <laughs> okay, that's good. So, yeah, this is another... Uh, C pen, uh, Penetra Go up to the top. Uh, genus Umbalula. Yeah, you can turn lasers off. Okay, and, video, uh, free to zoom. Kind of in interesting thing to note here. So uh, you can see kind of the current going from the right to the left of screen uh, and the polyps being in, in the opposite direction. So in a lot of corals, um, you, you see this kind of directionality and that the polyps are uh, typically oriented perpendicular to the, to the side of the current. Uh, and of course, in the sea fans, uh, you have the entire animal being oriented. Uh, but typically, what's been noted in a several uh, papers in the literature is that the polyps are usually found also in the in downstream portion of uh, uh, of the current. Uh, and okay, the I'll idea try to hold there it being at this that um, the okay. polyps, which of course are and tentacles used to capture food, um, okay. that it's easier to capture food uh, maybe in turbulent area eddies that are uh, uh, formed. Um, on the downstream uh, side of, of, of the animal. 
We should be close to wrapping up that last ship movement, just so you know. Copy that. Coming back up. All right. Happy with that video? Yep, very good. Copy that, Bridge. Thank All you. Right. Come wide. Move has been completed. Copy that. Yeah, just in time for you to push out a little. Mm -hmm. I'm back at zero three zero. Yeah, definitely increasing in slope. Current seems to be different. It's shifting on you. This isn't all from me, I don't believe. Yeah, it's getting pretty steep here. Yeah. So uh, we're getting close to the canyon wall now. The uh, Bathymetry is starting to become steeper here, and we're going to keep our eyes open for uh, coarser sediments and perhaps exposed rock soon. Yeah, it's almost like everything's moving up with you. Yeah. Or just, at least just hanging out. Yeah, I guess that strong northeast current is gone. That was on the canyon floor. So our pilots are noting that the strong north, or the uh, about three quarter of a knot northeast current that they felt uh, when they were down on the floor of the canyon uh, and the center of the canyon is uh, abated quite a bit as they've started to move up the wall. Holothurian. <laughs> we get quick snap zoom on that. Sure. Go for it, video. Ah, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> is that just a cast, maybe? A fecal cast. Yeah, that's a fecal cast, Adam. Uh, that's a Holothurian has been there, has eaten, and, and uh, has departed. <laughs> Excellent. Should All we right. get lasers on that? We can go ahead. <laughs> Or, I, I don't think we need lasers, pilot. <laughs> oh. oh, well, there we go. <laughs> Posterity safe. Now you know. Okay, we can go what? I'm sure Bob Carney will appreciate that. Um, so are you still looking 030, you think? Uh, I'd say 030 or yeah. 025. So it seemed like there was a steep part. Maybe my thrusters dusted it, and it just kind of fell everywhere all over me. But then I got up it, and now it's, I can see out 30 meters again. Yeah. But before it was, you know, I could only see 10 meters right. in the sonar, so kind of a wave. Yeah, I think uh, zero three zero. I'm, I'm ready for mm. that if the pilot is. I'm ready. Okay, another zero three zero for 30 meters. Bridge, this is ROV Nav. We are ready to make another move if you are. It will be three zero meters at zero three zero degrees at a speed of zero decimal two knots, please. It's an odd little red thing. So I'm checking Sounds out. Sounds good to me. Thank you, Bridge. We have a moment while Sirius catches up. Okay, quick zoom here video. Ah. All right, got it. Copy that bridge, thank you. Let's zoom in a little tighter on that. Ah, excellent. Um, not exactly sure what we're looking at there. Might be... Sure, either it almost looks like it might be some uh, 
either bryozoan or it could be, I suppose, some red algae that's sunk from the surface and it's just sort of stranded here. Right, I was thinking like the, uh, as we see the sargassum on the bottom, it might be some red algae uh, from the surface that sunk down, but right. uh, hard. There, there is a group of red algae that are, uh, have uh, kind of like calcareous um, tissues, and so they appear a little bit harder than your typical soft algae. Yeah. Ah, so yeah. we can go wise with you. Okay. Might be that. 50 degrees, we got. All right. We got plenty of time. So we're, we zoom out a bit on high pack nav, trying to see where we're supposed to be relative to the canyon wall. Video quick zoom on this. Fish. Sorry, did you want me to zoom on that? Oh, yes. Although I think it's zooming on us. Yeah, it's, it's this minimum focus. Okay, you can go what? We're seeing a few radial feeding patterns on the seafloor as we look down here. And off in the distance, we've got something on the seafloor, perhaps a holotherian. Uh, thank you, Nav. So we are... We're right about here. Yeah. Yeah. So we're kind of approaching where it should start to steepen yeah, up. So that looks yes. like a holotherian or a sea cucumber. You can see it's tube feet there underneath it in the front. Oh, no, sorry, it's a sea cucumber. My bad. But um, just to the right of that sea cucumber, I see a small colony poking out of the ground. It might be another coral. All right. Pilot, can we zoom on that uh, small colony to the right of the sea cucumber? Sure. It's poking out of the sediment. Just to get a quick zoom on that. Bob Kearney's going to give me a hard time, so I better say you can see the trace that this uh, cucumber is le leaving behind it as it's moving across the sediment and feeding. And so often we only see the traces afterwards. And we don't okay, see video. Animals, free to zoom. The animal there. And Copilot, can we get lasers for the zoom out? All sure. right. So this looks like uh, a coral. Yes, it is. Uh, I believe this is another sea pen. Uh, yeah, it looks like it might be damaged at the uh, top there. Maybe it's some. An coral. You can see that it has eight pinnate tentacles. And yeah, let's see if we can get a little closer to the top. Yeah, it Going looks to like it's been, uh, it's been damaged. I see some uh, barnacles Coming that are back down settled and growing on it. Normally, you wouldn't have what are referred to as uh, either epifauna or fouling organisms um, unless the tissue is damaged and the underlying skeleton. Down exposed. to the bottom. It does appear to be what's happened here. Do you think that's a result of uh, predation? than we saw earlier. Okay, I'll try to hold here. The mud is slippery. <laughs> yeah. That's easy to sink. Uh, excellent uh, zoom there. All right, go ahead. Adam, are you trying to say something? Oh, Scott, I asked if you thought the damage to the top of the sea pen might be a result of predation or just incidental damage. Uh, it's a good question. I'm not sure what the incidental damage would be down here. Maybe something moving down off the slope and knocking it, uh, possibly predation. Um, it's, it's an unknown. We don't have enough observations to be sure. able to say what might be feeding on these colonies. Uh, this is a sea pen, though, related to the Umbalula that we saw before, and you can see that it's kind of disappearing into the sediments, and so uh, below that level would be the inflated bulb that's kind of holding it into place. Ah, very good. It looks like a little uh, amphipod crustacean is on the sediment. Just to the right of it, you can see it's kind of uh, white there. Yeah, we see it moving out there. Yeah. Okay, nice. video. Whenever you're happy, we can do lasers. All right, 
I think we're good. All right. And I'm looking at you 75 degrees. Okay, I'll get moving. Lasers are disengaged. Judging by our sonars, I guess uphill is a little more, or your sonar, it's a little more to starboard, maybe? Yeah. So maybe zero four five zero five zero. That agrees with high pack as well. Okay, that's good. Also, that move should just be a Looks like a couple more sea cucumbers or holothurians there on the Video's sea floor. We're out. certainly seeing a lot of evidence of those through their tracks and <coughs> their fecal cast, and also Always individuals completed. here uh, on the bottom in this area. Maybe I'll just keep it at zero five zero if, you, if we expect to go that way. What do you think? Sure. Kind of makes sense here. Yeah. As we look at some of the sediment that's collected in the canyon bottom, um, I did want to mention that oftentimes when we think about the deep sea, we think about very slow geologic processes. So sediments falling down to the sea floor very slowly and building up millimeter by millimeter over millions of years. But some processes can be quite fast. We have records of um, turbidity currents that occurred off of uh, the Grand Banks in the Atlantic Ocean. Uh, where the downslope movement of sediment uh, reached 60 miles an hour. And the reason we know this, uh, this, this happened in 1929, we know this because that downslope movement of sediment broke 12 uh, transoceanic uh, telephone or uh, telegraph lines. And so they knew the exact times each of the telegraph lines was broken, and they were able to calculate the speed of that uh, downslope movement. So these, these sediments can get going quite fast, especially if they're, they're laden with... Um, Coarser Video, grain material on this fish. Or to remember, that's that's some of the processes that help shape waving. these canyons. Uh, it's not a fish. Looks like we got some mucus there on the seafloor. Difficult to tell what the origin of that is. Okay, just mucus. Can go wide. Yeah, so we're thinking zero five zero now. Wow. Yeah, we can do another thirty meters at zero five zero. That sounds good to me. How does that sit with you, pilot? Uh, yeah, my sonar, if you look, I'm pretty well centered, actually, at, I guess the craft makes it tricky, but yeah, somewhere yeah. around there. You do zero six zero if you want. Is that what you were thinking? Yeah, it seems to be a little more off to starboard. Sure. I come over there, zero six zero. Mm -hmm. 30 meters. I will call in 30 meters at zero six zero. Copy that. And... I am at zero six zero. Bridge, this is ROV Nav. I just want to make a quick announcement to those following along on We'd shore like that we're going to have a Facebook ready. live chat uh, from the Three ship, a live stream today from 1 p.m. to 1 30 p.m. Central Time. The speed of zero uh, that decimal Facebook handle will be o Ocean Exploration Research, so that will be... Uh, our ROV team lead, uh, Carl McClatchy, and you. our expedition coordinator, Nick Polenko, uh, answering questions live on Facebook for anyone who wants to tune into that. Copy that bridge, thank you. So, pilot be advised, we do have a uh, still cam imaging capability back up. Okay. So video will fix the screen for us whenever we do ask? Yeah, or I can too. Oh, you can too, yeah, okay. It's this uh, unlabeled video router button right here. Brilliant. I don't have a uh, copy of it here. The you can check the, the video, but I don't have it here. It looks like the uh, 
conversion. The conversion's messed up. Oh no, it's not on. Oh. Yeah. I was just telling him that we can pick okay. it up if he needs to. Okay, I'm zigzagging across the sediment here. All right, that sounds good, pilot. Uh, do we see any returns on the um, scanning sonar indicating proximity to the canyon wall? No, as far out as I am, it's uh, pretty flat. Okay. But judging by where we are in the high pack, uh, we should be getting st steeper soon. Sounds we good. We are still kind of on the flat, uh, I don't know what the geologic term is, the base where it starts to steepen up. Sure. Uh, I'm not sure there's an official term, maybe the toe of the slope, the toe. we'll call it. Toe. We're on the toe. Sounds good. It's now a good time for us all to introduce ourselves. Absolutely. Uh, we'll uh, shoot it to the front row and have the GFOE team introduce themselves. Okay, in the front row of the control room, uh, operating the remotely operated vehicles. We're an engineering team from the Global Foundation for Ocean Exploration. I'm Carl McCletchy as pilot. Chris Ritter, sitting co-pilot. Bob Knott on video. And Caitlin Bailey in the back doing clipping. And we will, uh, for the next, at least the next half hour, we'll be operating the vehicles and uh, bringing you back the images from the seafloor. Excellent. In the back row, this is Adam Skarky. I'm a marine geologist, one of the science co-team leads. Uh, for this expedition, and uh, it's, uh, we always like to introduce everybody that's involved. This is really, uh, it, it takes many, many, in <coughs> many, many individuals to successfully get to the seafloor and, and get these type of amazing observations. Uh, so we've got our full engineering team, as well as a team of uh, seafarers and, and from uh, uh, officers from NOAA who operate the ship depth. and make sure nice. we are out here safe and, and well fed. And so... Well, we have quite a team that we uh, rely on to uh, successfully undertake these expeditions. I'll just get a zoom and come back to your center, co-pilot. Copy yeah, that. Quick zoom there if we can. Uh, yep. 15 degrees. Okay. Follow you. you got some time. Yep. No obstacles up ahead. Ooh, I set down a little fast there. Let's get a zoom here, video. Looks like we have another 15 meters in the move. So to my eye, that Copy looks that. like a... Okay. A sponge, but uh, maybe with an, a sponge on an anemone. Uh, I'll have to, uh, I don't know if anyone on the line is, uh, has thoughts on this, but it looks to me to be a sponge on top of an anemone. We saw one earlier that looked like this, with an anemone mm -hmm. on the bottom, a sponge on top. It's interesting. Hmm. Looking good. That's good. All right. Anything you'd like here, video? No. I'm going to try to do lasers. Okay. Hey, pilot, can we get lasers on this before we zoom out? Uh, yeah. Thank you. Lasers. I think this is what we saw very close to the beginning of the Come dive. out a little more, video? I think they, yeah, there they are. It's very small. I agree. Sure. Uh, I don't know if that's another. Okay. Young sponge, I think we're good to go. Can we go wide? And I came around a little bit, so mm -hmm. I'll have to come back to zero six zero. Okay. Zero six zero there. Watch later. This is ROV Nav. Just wanted to let you know we've traversed another hundred meters. Copy that bridge. Thank you. Move has been completed. And uh, for those on our science team that Coming are following out. the track, uh, we have uh, completed another 100 meter uh, transit.
This looks like a similar sponge. about another 30 meters that way. Zero, six, zero, still okay with you? Yeah, it's, yep, yeah, that's the way I'm headed. It's looking good. Yeah. Quick zoom here video, just above lasers. Cool. Okay, just rubble, you can come wide. Go ahead, bridge. I'll go up. Okay, what would you like to do? Go ahead, that sounds good with us. Understood. Yeah, Nev, have you uh, checked in on current lately? I have. Get an idea of where the ship will drift if anything happens. Oh, yeah. So current's picking up on the surface. It's just good practice to draw the ship where it is with the forces and which way you think it'll drift. The uh, the ship also just did a heading change mm. of five degrees. observation that to the left of those laser dots you see those these uh, lines that are left in the sediment and we noted earlier that purple sea cucumber feeding in the sediment so is leaving those lines behind it um, partly the okay part clear of, of lasers so again there are lots of traces here that show free that, to zoom uh, video animals have been Copy that bridge. on the bottom even if they aren't necessarily the nose. Looks like we're looking at a uh, glass sponge here with a couple of anemones growing on it and I'm not sure if that those stalks are um, bridges is our enough. dead crinoid or some other kind of stock and it has maybe Amphipod, small amphipod tubes We're looking to do another move. Or possibly Three zero meters at zero six zero degrees. A speed of zero decimal two knots. Video, we come out partial. Yeah, Try to get Scott, a side view. I think there, yeah, there's definitely some uh, hydroids, and I think I also Sounds saw a good. couple Thank barnacles. It's definitely something. The tip of one of them, the yellowish looking thing as well. Looking down at you, 80 Copy degrees. that bridge, thank you. Okay. I think you've got a minute if you want to get another view. Yeah, we'll do a view this way. We'll uh, so on. I guess this is just a, a good example of uh, when hard substrate the is at a premium. At zero, six, zero so we are surrounded by mud, and then uh, a lot of these organisms that Copy need that. hard substrate to attach to will take anything they can and, and say, so, yeah, they've taken hold okay, of video. the Let's get a zoom on the stock here. Of this sponge. Nav, what was our bailout? Our bailout is currently southeast. Okay. And as we get up the canyon a little bit more, we can change it to south to fit the uh, the boat's heading a little bit better. Copy that. Yeah, that sounds good. Be easy for them to just come ahead if something happened. Top side current and bottom current are opposite. Hmm. We can even go ahead and then change that in the next couple of minutes. Okay, video, I should be moving on. Can we go wide? Floor. Sounds good. Looking 
Come down 85 degrees. Yeah, so there's uh, another Delta tripod 16. fish, that same species that we imaged earlier. Uh, Bathypteroids, um, Coralator, and they have these extremely long uh, fins, modified fins uh, that can be up to a meter or more in length. Excellent. So did we just call in the next one? Yes, the last move of 30 meters at 060 degrees was called in at 1643, or Great. it was initiated at 1643. Great, thank you. All right, I'm nicely out ahead. So I think the mean of this uh, <laughs> high back nonsense makes sense with the yeah. bathymetry. Excluding these outliers. So how much uh, higher is the top of this, or the last waypoint at the top? Sea star. So another couple of sea cucumbers, and it looks like that sea star that Chris the waypoint identified at the top is about for us earlier. Two thousand six hundred forty meters. Star we are currently master, perhaps. probably another. 500 meters yeah. of elevation change. So we just have to rise 130 meters over 500. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay, video for to zoom. That's a new one for today, I think. Yeah, yeah actually, I stand corrected. I don't think that's the same we, we imaged earlier. Coming to starboard. What do you have the, uh, the track set at for for um, time? Do you have any more zoom video? That's max three hundred. Okay. Well, I will just sh if you come out partial, I'll shift over to this. Uh, just curious. Well, as long as I'm here. Um, no, I was just curious. Just seeing what the. Okay, that's good. You can go in. Yeah. We'll just cool. look at it for 10 seconds and then move on. That'd be cleaner. Looks interesting. If you try really like clear view of the gut on this holotherian here, The uh, some of the internal structure. Yeah, earlier we saw that uh, fecal trace. It's almost as if the uh, body Hello. disintegrated around the fecal trace. Hey, Chris, go ahead. Hey. Uh, this isn't the after it. You were right that it's not um, any of the ones that we've seen. Video, we're also at a much you're greater happy with depth. this, we can come out um, to both with lasers. I think this might be either um, in the genus uh, Lyconotaster, which is something that um, also, uh, have we haven't seen bridge. before. Uh, I'd like to discuss um, is it very change? large? I can't tell... Uh, Currently, the, we're at southeast, size. and we'd like to change uh, to south. The we believe it would work better with the, uh, the way it's the ship's It's about uh, seven centimeters across. Really? Yep. Wow. Um, From our actually, our bell be, out will um, be sent to south then. Uh, something okay, called Sabogaster, which I described recently. Um, something called Sabogaster nisani, 
um, if you guys um, want something to do, uh, collecting this would be really uh, a step in figuring out what that is. Um, uh, oh, and I can also give you a name on this really delightful sea cucumber that you've been seeing. I'm pretty sure this is something called Palopatides. Um, the uh, if you look at the underside, it has that big kind of round mouth. Did the uh, ship but stop? that was also the one you saw yesterday. That's been that sort of undulates and swims. Yes, the move when it swims, if it's uh, disturbed too much. Also, the, he um, mentioned that the uh, the winds are. But uh, yeah, um, if you guys have there, a moment to collect this, to um, okay. it uh, would either be a new record or something that I described only like a year ago, or or could be something completely mm. different. But the only asteroids from this step yeah, in the Atlantic are You already are had 95 degrees, and you still had two minutes to swing. So. Yeah, thanks so much, Chris. Uh, unfortunately, yeah, we are on the move. Uh, we had called in the ship uh, move, but uh, we'll keep an eye out for, for another one. Probably see another one. Ah, no worries. Uh, like I said, um, I had my suspicions, and, uh, you know, uh, another opportunity will certainly arise, and you're, you've been out there for three weeks. But um, uh, there definitely seems to be uh, uh, very few of, of that particular group at this step. So, um, you know, seeing one is definitely sort of uh, a unicorn in a, in, a, in a forest, as it were. Um, not the case for these sea cucumbers, though. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, and, and then uh, Palopatides is, uh, if, I, if I'm correct, uh, P-A-E-L-O-P-A-T-I-D-E-S. And it's got that sort of flat, yeah, sort of um, cleaner, round or... bottom um, with the fringe it's around the edge and the translucent uh, and the translucent body I'll wall. Keep an eye on um, I think Dr. Possum has seen these uh, the before yeah, uh, in this area. I could be wrong, but um, uh, I will have to consult with him. But I think that's what it is. Excellent. Thank you, Chris. Appreciate that. Also, oh, we should and, be pretty close to settling the out. The poop is also very important. So next time you have an opportunity to, to laser scale that, I fully the, uh, endorse zero six it. Zero. Well, do. Okay, video. Let's get this whole <laughs> specimen. <laughs> I'll catch up with you guys again so. later. Maybe have a good maybe wait track up to, the the, up to the uh, pinnacle. Thanks so much. Or down to wherever you're going. Bye. Bye, Chris. Excellent. Got a close-up of the nice uh, sponge material back here. So, yeah, here we have another glass sponge. Um, and so this this uh, this whole group of sponges is uh, characterized by having siliceous uh, skeletons, and it also is characterized by uh, having these, um, these hook-like uh, skeletal elements that it uses to attach, and uh, we saw that in view just a second ago. Okay, I'll tilt down to the shrimp. So it's amazing to think as we were looking at the inside of that sponge that all those little interior yes. structural pieces are made up of silica, which is the same material like beach sand is made out of for the most part. So it's uh, uh, almost the reason they're called glass sponges okay, is but you can go silica shrimp. dioxide is the, the base of glass. So yeah, this is a common um, Inhabitant of, of soft bottom, so this is a long-legged uh, shrimp. Uh, so this is genus Nematocarcinus, and uh, for that sponge, I believe it is a Ferronematidae uh, sponge um, in that family. Copy, copy that bridge. You did call it, and I have it recorded. But thank you for the checkup. Video whenever you're happy with the shot. All set. Thank okay. you. Keep lasers on. Or... Uh, so again, now glass sponges are off. almost. Uh, exclusively found in, in, in deep waters. So this is not something you would see in, 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 in shallow waters. We were thinking another 30 at 060. Is it starting to firm up over there now? Yeah, maybe, maybe let's try 040. 
Let's line up that way and see. Yeah. yeah pretty much line up at zero four zero. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, let's try that. Thirty meters at zero four zero. I will call it in. Bridge. This is ROV Nev. We'd like to call on another move with 30 meters at zero four zero degrees, a speed of zero decimal two knots. Sounds good. Thank you, Bridge. Copy that bridge. Thank you. Yeah, so we're starting to pick up a little mm -hmm. bit more than just the oh, slight yeah. range. So yeah, that's good. That's good. And that's more at a. Uh, oh, I see your heading came around. Did I pull you around? Uh, it's kind of. It's like 10 degrees to port. I don't think yeah. you're pulling. It's just trying to find a. Mm -hmm. Cheat one way a little. Uh, it was mentioned a moment ago that. Uh, Sometimes these seabed turbidity flows that form these canyons can reach quite high speeds. Uh, as I mentioned, that one off of uh, Canada in the Atlantic Ocean in 1929 was recorded at moving over 60 miles per hour. So speed you would drive down the highway, so quite remarkable. And uh, that means when these uh, turbidity flows reach the sea floor that, uh, on the deep abyssal plain, they can run out for many kilometers across the sea floor and extend quite a ways offshore and as they slow down and run out across the seafloor they leave behind characteristic deposits the coarsest grain material being the heaviest falls out first and then that's followed by progressively finer grain sediments so usually we get a layer of sand type sediments followed by silts and then clays on top of those and you'll see this cycle repeated over and over and over again uh, for low density flows the sequence is called a boma sequence after a very famous oceanographer uh, that uh, coined it, and uh, if it's a, a more dense flow, it's called a low sequence, uh, also after a, a famous marine geologist who coined that term. And uh, In looking through yesterday's dive video where we saw extensive beds of exposed sediment, I think there's a good chance we were seeing some some BOMA-type sequences in there, particularly we noted on the dive yesterday some some trough cross bedding, sort of that, that appearance of the, the sediment beds being a bit swirly. Uh, that's characteristic of the, uh, the third layer or the sea layer of a BOMA sequence. So we may have been looking at some um, very ancient, probably into the tens or hundreds of millions of years old, uh, deep sea turbidity flows preserved in those rocks that we were looking at yesterday uh, on the top of our mound we explored. And just to update our folks, uh, it is lunchtime here on the ship, so we're going through a, a personnel change uh, as our ROV uh, piloting team changes. And so we'll just hang tight here for a few minutes, and then we'll be on our way. And uh, Robert Carney just mentioned that uh, he agrees that he thinks we may have been looking at um, some BOMA-type sequences in our exposed rock yesterday. So 
that uh, helps give us some geologic perspective on how those rocks we saw formed. Uh, they were probably uh, deep sea sediments that were, were formed from repeated cycles of, uh, of turbidity flows moving down slope. And actually, in looking at some of the rocks we sampled, their grain size uh, approaches a silt even to find sand. And, and typically, to get that large a grain size far offshore, uh, we need a turbidity flow. That's not the sort of thing we would expect to be raining down from above. Uh, usually those are only clay-sized particles. So I think we may have sampled portions of a, a, a BOMA-type sequence uh, with some of those rocks that we were able to sample with the ROV Deep Discoverer right. during our dive yesterday. Nav. Pilot. How are we doing? Well... They called in a move for 30 meters at 040 about five minutes ago, but All there's right. a couple minutes of uh, delay. So. Sure, okay. Looks like we're still moving, right? Yep. Okay. So you'll be moving for a, for a little what bit What was here. the uh, heading? 040. 040. Okay. Right about where we are. Okay. Uh, bridge just, copy bridge, bridge just called down to say move is complete. Like um, that. But Good. you'll be swinging for a, a few minutes. Sure. So we're not in a huge rush. Uh, waypoint 3, which is the top of this canyon wall, is about 350 meters away. We've got 177 minutes, just under three hours remaining on bottom. The quick math in my head sounds about uh, 0 0.064 knots. Um, yes, that's uh, precisely what the Excel spreadsheet says. So. <laughs> Uncanny. <laughs> Counting the grains of sand going by, are you? Yeah. Um, so we're, we'll definitely... Uh, Keep a good pace, but we're not in a rush. Good, and uh, we Adam, do expect from, uh, to get a little steeper right about screen, here. Right? Yes, say we're that we, uh, at the base of this, uh, the, uh, this wall. Uh, slope? So. Yep, I mean the slope of this canyon. Or so as we ascend, um, it. you know, we want to done occasionally look at the uh, uh, My perspective is that we are Cap at the base the right now, and we are starting to move up it, but we haven't reached or cable uh, nearly the, the steepest slope rises very quickly. Okay, uh, so we are well. starting to increase in slope here, and I'm also noticing this conspicuous, eh, maybe, maybe not, increase in grain size on the seafloor. So I think we yes, are starting right to move now. up the slope, yeah, zero four zero uh, but we're not, roughly we're not our sort of steepest we'll slopes yet. The dive up, the, up the slope. Okay. Copy, thank you. Interesting star-shaped uh, burrow there on the seafloor. Yeah, I just saw one of those earlier, so I Bailout suspect is there due is a south. star buried just beneath there. Copy. Due south. Great direction. And the other side of the canyon is roughly five to 600 meters away. Okay. Watch well, lead pilot. I think we've seen a, a number of these. Is that right? We'll keep moving. And there's more over here. Do you have a... A fish, tripod fish. Pretty large individual. Yeah, so again, that's that same species we've um, imaged a, a couple times today. That's going to be in the genus uh, Bathypterois, uh, uh, species Phoenix. And that sea cucumber. Uh, Robert Carney also provided uh, uh, another ID, uh, Bentoditis typica. So thanks, Robert. And to the point you were making earlier, Scott, so, so uh, uh, the, is not working the slopes yeah. aren't really, really steep like uh, in the bathy, so it's about 25 so degrees or so. Is is Probably uh, get moving again whenever you'd like. Okay. I'm just going to keep doing 30 meters at 040. Um, that sounds until great. Until we uh, have any reason to do otherwise. And uh, just to chime in as a geologist, I know we were joking earlier we about the, uh, the fecal cast and putting a measurement sonar. on those. But uh, in the world of geology, we actually have a term for Bridge. fossilized fecal enough. material. It's a coprolite. And, and that's, uh, those are actually Good, useful please. fossils in interpreting meters, the geologic record. We can uh, zero, use four, them zero, to interpret zero decimal two knots. Uh, depositional environments and geographic environments environments in the past based on looking at the, uh, the fecal uh, cast of uh, organisms that live there. So uh, it is uh, 
in so some ways a uh, very useful tool uh, for cereals, some parts of the uh, the geological don't world. I think there's actually a problem with it. I think it's also um, informative it just doesn't for the get a degree good return of off of this to the bottom. That is, um, it's uh, an indication sediment. that there are organisms Copper that are yesterday. stirring up, feeding oh, on the bottom, okay. overturning sediments. So uh, I video, guess let's come in on this. Helping understand the layering of those sediments. I'm going to set my toes down. That's absolutely right. You know, uh, bioturbation is sort of a, a um, uh, it, it skews our, our layering to some degree because it stirs up the, the layering geologists are looking for, but it's a, it's an informative about that that degree of activity. And looks like we've got a, uh, a brittle star here. Yeah, maybe I haven't been paying enough attention, but this looks like the first of this type that we've seen today. Um, uh, perhaps we'll hear from Chris or somebody else, but this strikes me as uh, close to Ophium museum, the genus Ophium museum, uh, which is a really common uh, opioid on soft sediments in the deep sea. Um, we'll stand by to see if I'm right on that guess. While waiting, I guess I'll just note, yesterday we were looking at um, Any more zoom an asteroid sea star for the common starfish. Nice. Okay. Uh, that's in a separate class from these guys, the ophiroids. And I noticed, <coughs> excuse me, I noted yesterday when we were looking at that sea star that the stomach extends into the arm. That is not the case in these ophiroids, uh, the brittle stars. You notice the arms are much smaller and they're clearly separated from that central disc. So in this case, the stomach is uh, restricted to just the disc there. Go ahead. Sure. Co-pilot, can you get lasers? Certainly. And video, uh, yep. when you're ready, can you start to come out and get lasers? I'll bring them up. So we've it. got the lasers here, and we can see that this, uh, this individual is more than 20 centimeters from arm tip to arm tip, Sliding maybe close down, to 30 centimeters. Back. So uh, fairly, seems like a fairly large... Uh, individual here. All right, I think we can move on. Come on out. And Sirius yeah. is yeah. catching Ship up. Ship is underway, so great. They're often fun and to watch moving because they can push their disc yet, up so off the, the sediment with their arms. Yeah. Their arms are Doing really flexible. Now. And the brittle star push-ups. Yeah, indeed. They almost uh, appear to like run over the sediment. The move was uh, zero four zero, so Sirius is just a little bit off. I noticed earlier it was kind of getting blown to port from the current. Yeah, from the current there. I've got okay. it dialed in to forty, but kind of catches the uh, the wind and yeah. turns to port. Sea cucumber. Hello. Hey, Chris. Hey. Uh, so, um, uh, um, Scott is correct, but is also incorrect because uh, so this did look like what used to be called Ophium Museum. Uh, some recent genetic work has uh, sort of done some turn and go back. 180s on the taxonomy, and this is now uh, in the genus Ophiomusa. Um, so it, it did actually uh, used to be called Ophiomusium, uh, but again, there were some, some changes. Um, this is, a, as, as he mentioned, a fairly uh, frequently encountered uh, abyssal brittle star uh, in the Ophiuridae, or whatever it is that they're actually in now. Um, the Ophiroids have recently had a massive overhaul, uh, thanks to Tim O'Hara at the Museum of Victoria in Australia. And so a lot of these things are kind of being uh, re-understood. But uh, these particular brittle stars, in, in, a, in a manner analogous to some of the sea stars I was talking about, um, are actually... Uh, uh, quite old in the fossil record and um my and so some of them uh, have been around for quite uh, a long time sort right, of similar to that nymphaster we saw the other day the and uh, so again uh, some really interesting animals that we're just now kind of 
rediscovering. Um, uh, I, there's uh, not a lot about them that I'm aware of uh, in terms of diet that, that, that is really well understood. Sure, but um, so they think they're just omnivores. Uh, so and I uh, confer I concede to Bob Carney also that uh, my idea of paleopatides is incorrect. They were in fact benthodites. My cucumber kung fu is very weak in this in this regard. So anyway, uh, I'll let you guys get back to it, and I'm um, looking forward to seeing the next star shaped thing, and uh, maybe even a star shaped burrow or two. Chris, Chris, before you go again, sure. genus Ophium Musa. Yeah, if you go to the World Ophiroidea database. Yep. Um, something like Ophium Museum Limini, yep. um, and uh, you look that up. The name is simply uh, Ophium Musa Limini. Got it. So Great. just have to shorten it to uh, M U S A instead of I U M. Copy bridge. Uh, move right. is uh, on the come ship. on out video. We got to. Uh, we'll probably have two to three minutes. All of right, swing. fantastic. Well, thanks for calling in, Chris. It's always. Uh, Excellent to have input from Deep our scientists following along on shore when they can provide uh, their specific expertise to what we're seeing. And uh, we always appreciate having uh, Chris call in and uh, share yeah, information no. about uh, right. the sea stars. It's not going to help. That was only 10% down. I buried myself that deep. I'm just going to wait a minute or two and I'll call another one in. Sure. I'll keep moving. Yeah, so for those who joined uh, later in the dive, it seems like the most common uh, macro invertebrates that we've seen so far are, are that sea pen that, uh, that's, and that uh, umbelula and then the uh, sea cucumber methoditis typica and then a few of the glass sponges. Uh, uh, but we hope that as we finally make our way to the canyon wall that we'll see uh, some more exposed um, substrate uh, and hopefully uh, a change in community. And uh, yeah, thanks uh, Scott for providing there the the correct spelling of the that revised name for the ophiroid. This is the steepest part of the slope. And I also uh, want to just run now and uh, it's, uh, it averages remind to all of our shore-based scientists uh, to so please yeah. help us with annotating be, uh, the video using the uh, C-Scribe. Uh, sure. So every uh, sharper sections, but um, night before uh, the dive I when we sent uh, along the dive plan, we'll send an updated link to the, those days annotations. Uh, and so we really want to encourage all of our shore-based scientists to, to use uh, this wonderful software, uh, help us annotate the video, because uh, those uh, now it then becomes an inventory of, of observations that is, is, is searchable and browsable, uh, and really helps uh, everyone find uh, video that might be of interest for later analysis. And we're seeing a real high abundance of these sea star shaped uh, burrows on the seafloor. So again, as Scott mentioned, these may be locations where sea stars are sitting, have dug themselves in and are just below the uh, the sediment surface there hiding from us. And uh, our navigator has also provided an update that we're moving into the, the steepest portion here. So again, the, the, the term steep is, of course, relative. Uh, we expect to see slopes here of 25 degrees. Uh, and as we move on into the sea pen, yep. Uh, so this is the, the same sea pen that we have Im imaged uh, a few times now. Have we seen uh, this this type of 
Starfish? I believe so, but maybe we can do a quick snap right. zoom. Well, I feel like you're still moving, Don. Or come you in on it, it uh, floating. No. Come in now. No, I think we've stopped. Okay. <coughs> no, that is... That's... Looks like you had a recent meal. Uh, enough interest to to get in really tight on this, or have we seen it? Yeah, I, I do think it, yeah, it is a new observation. Okay. So let's uh, Let me get my toe in here. Okay, video, you can come in more if you have it. That's also how I like to lay down after a big meal. I was going to say, is this sort of analogous to after Thanksgiving dinner? All You're right, uh, laying on, on the couch out. getting ready for a nap as all your uh, metabolic energy goes to digestion? I think I got lasers already. Okay. okay. Moving Probably on. We're directly above you, but uh, we've stopped. I'm going right. to range your D2 Get sonar down to again. 20 meters. Okay. Sirius at 50. Copy that. There's certainly good evidence for that in um, some other species that I'm familiar with, Adam, and uh, some examples would be scavenging amphipods that may engorge themselves so much that they can no longer swim and just kind of plop down the sediments and may remain there for a couple of months as they digest the meal. Yeah, it so sounds about like my Thanksgiving. Hello, it's me again. Hey, Chris. Hey. Uh, so I think this might be the same genus that you guys saw a little earlier, but the uh, arms are buried below the surface of the substrate. Um, one of the key things that you can use to help identify right. is Should that the um, long arms right. are usually covered with Bridge, a row of sharp spines along each side. Another and move, um, if you look closely on that one that we were just looking at, zero, uh, they four, do have zero, spines, but uh, like I said, they were obscured because the level of the um, uh, That's a good copy. the level of the arms is basically covered up by the, the flocculants on the side. Um, but you guys got a wonderful shot of the disc as it was engorged and filled with mud. And um, as you had noted earlier, uh, many of the star-shaped um, burrows or indentations that you're seeing in the muddy substrate are uh, probably, if not this same species, uh, something related to it, uh, something in the Astropectinidae. Uh, that's Let's their life. Mode. The so perhaps at some nice. point, okay. uh, you know, you okay, might you buzz that. close to it and dust off some of it and see if there's something below it. Um, but uh, a lot of uh, times you can, as I said, with, with specimens in the collection, when these were collected formerly, you know, you, you got kind of a two-for-one because you would Watch, Lee, collect some of these sponge? mud stars, and the entire disc is just engorged with mud. And uh, these don't have an anus. Right, they, they, they just, you know, there's just the mouth, and that's it. So, you know, the food goes in, and then it, it sort of, it, they're digested or whatever, and then they're just spit back out again. Um, so they kind of just go for whatever good stuff is in the sediment, whether it's... Uh, well, they're little, it's little clams or forams or what have you, and then and then presumably they're vented out. Um, but uh, they uh, can be quite abundant. Uh, there are some collections of, of that species where you know there are dozens to hundreds of them that come up in one trawl net, and so something like what you're observing is very consistent with what we're seeing, um, you know, from from uh, prior data. 
Uh, so uh, very interesting, and uh, it's good to see them spread out, especially just to sort of uh, get an idea of what they're actually like um, in situ as opposed to you know what they're like when they come up on the, the deck of a ship. Chris, um, what was the genus? I heard Dytaster, D-Y-T-A-S-T-E-R. I'm sorry, uh, repeat the beginning, I apologize. No, no worries. D-Y. Oh, D-Y, okay. Got it, thanks. Oh, that's it? <laughs> okay. I got the rest. <laughs> Thanks. Sure. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Doing a nice job with the track uphill. Weaving back and forth. Looks good. You can see my previous track so line current in the depth here field. is 2,737 <laughs> meters. Uh, the top of this feature is uh, just around 2,600 meters. Uh, so this is the north wall of Perdido Canyon. ADCP says 1.2 knots of current. Wind is getting there too, right? Sorry? Wind is getting up there as well? Yeah, wind's been hanging uh, around 18 knots. Oh, not too bad. Yeah. And then also to update uh, about the upcoming schedule. So, yeah, we are uh, back on the original schedule, so we missed a couple dives. Uh, tomorrow's dive yep. is going yep. to be in Hidalgo Basin. And then um, and the day after that, we'll explore a, a mud volcano. Uh, but uh, the weather forecast here for the next uh, week or so uh, looks uh, very promising, very good. Uh, so we'll continue, hopefully, uh, with our in original schedule that will take us uh, diving different habitats. Uh, we also have a midwater dive uh, just a few away from the days Can away I'm from partial us. partial on this video. And an anemone. Good example of uh, sessile organisms desperately yeah, seeking so a hard substrate like the, on the which to the uh, land and grow. We're going to want to tend to blow us into the slope. Okay. So if anything happens, we'll just want to pull up on the winch and yep. come up bottom as soon as we can. And uh, especially fighting these conditions, we should check that that uh, hydraulic light frequently, right? I've been keeping an eye on it. Great. Yep. I, I missed it when it happened the other day. All right, uh, come on out. Why we got a little moment here, I want to remind everyone that in a little more than a half hour, there's going to be a Facebook live chat uh, live from the ship with our ROV team lead, Carl McCletchy, and our expedition co coordinator, Nick Polanco. Uh, they'll be speaking on Facebook live from 1 to 1.30, answering questions uh, about the expedition. 
And so if you're interested in that, you can join uh, from 1 to 1.30 p.m. today. And the Facebook handle for that is Ocean Exploration Research, all one word. And that is, uh, Adam, while you're talking about it, that's just one of the many uh, outreach events that we'll have uh, associated with this expedition. So there'll be several other live interactions uh, throughout the expedition. Uh, we also, uh, thanks to the OER education team, Cut have been able to set up <laughs> public displays at several places around the country. Yeah, that's, uh, that's fine. Um, Go ahead and do that. Thank you. And then also Let's thank our, all of our shore-based... Uh, education and outreach team for all the great work they've been doing of uh, doing all the updates and also on the on the expedition website so uh, you can follow along there'll be a summaries of what's happening every day uh, some spectacular really highlight now. videos too being uploaded every few days so what, what were you uh, hoping to adjust your head to so again I, uh, I'd like to uh, direct your attention to the oceanexplorer.noaa.gov slash Oceanos. Good copy. Uh, there'll be a link there to the expedition, and you can uh, get all relevant information uh, right there. Good copy. Thanks. <coughs> it's interesting, Daniel. We're on slopes now that are approaching... Uh, the angle of some of the slopes we saw on our dive yesterday where we saw exposed rock and uh, as you can see we're we're still here in in quite a bit of sediment cover uh, but we're expecting as we move higher this might be uh, become less pretty stretched out um, yep. certainly this canyon focuses sediment movement across the continental margin and so we, we do have change, a lot so higher volume of sediment in this location yep. than yep. we would on some Maybe of those find one uh, mounds in the middle of the intraslope basin so uh, it may be that we just need to get a little bit higher off the canyon floor here Past one and we'll hopefully start to see some uh, exposed rock walls are they looking for that yeah they were uh I think there's a starfish in each one, yeah. and I can yeah, probably blast it with Yeah, that's an issue here in a wash. lot of places in the Gulf. Uh, the steepest slopes yeah, are, aren't true. really yeah. steep. Uh, that will change uh, in the last week or so of the expedition as we move towards yeah, the uh, West Florida escarpment, we uh, where we do see uh, basically vertical faces in, in a few places. What was that video? Uh, but here in the western those, uh, and central portion of the, the Gulf, uh, the, uh, just around most of the slopes are fairly, fairly gentle. I think I can get back to that. There it is. There they are. Just on the left side of the video. I see that. Thank you. So watch lead. We suspect there's a, a starfish in each of these star-shaped uh, depressions. Is that right? I think I could unbury one with some prop wash. Thanks, Bridge. I'm going to give it a try. I'm going to wait until uh, you're done here, and I'll get a move called in. Normally not trying to aim the prop wash. Ah, missed. Get on top and thrust Engage it up. Engage cloaking device. I'll go up higher. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so it's to the Bridge two sides. Let me give that one more shot. Just curious what you're reading for wind speed and direction.
Just Copy, thanks. And also just a heads up and time again? check here. I'm doing the same thing. I'm so just we'll have our, our Facebook Live event that Adam talked about uh, starting at 1 o'clock, and then we'll have uh, two hours okay. more after that of dive time. So we'll, we'll have to come off the bottom close to 3 o'clock, a little after 3 o'clock local time. Uh, so that gives us a little over two and a half hours of, of bottom time. Um, again, what we're hoping to achieve is just to make it to the top of this north wall of the canyon. That's uh, about 2,600 meters, so about 100 meters or so up slope. Um, at the current pace, we should be able to make that. And then uh, with the remaining time, we'll, uh, we'll transit along the edge of that, that the top of the, the wall and in hopes of finding some some hard uh, substrate should be clearing in a few more seconds we'll see if if that worked Frank, you can need to dig deeper yeah i that. think they're deeper yeah. i've i've only blasted the very surface, surface off yeah i can still see the star yep. yeah. all right that was worth a shot i think the best way would be get your vertical on top of it and thrust up you know go right over top Maybe it's hard to position because that's behind me. Yeah. Well, maybe you can see it in the Sirius view. <laughs> okay. Estimate anyway. All right. <laughs> we'll do. We'll do one more try. I'm gonna try it again. Gonna try a bigger thruster. I'll go up a little bit too. So. Okay, here we go. Okay. No, I just, I don't think it's going to do it. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Moving back up. They always have the shovel. Yeah, we do have the shovel. <laughs> That's right. We have a scoop on board. You could just start digging very slowly. <laughs> All right. You want me to call in the move? Uh, yeah, let's yeah. get moving All again. Right. Bridge, this is RV now. All right, I'm coming back down. Okay. Like a move if you're ready. Take a guess as, as to what it is. <laughs> <laughs> That's correct. <laughs> Good copy. Three zero meters bearing zero four zero speed decimal two initiated. Thanks, Bridge. <laughs> yeah, and uh, also for those folks who, who missed kind of the introduction of the dive, and uh, so we are um, further down, so close to the opening of Perdido Canyon. Um, we um, couldn't really choose a, a, a site yeah, much further into the canyon because there's actually a, an oil rig. Every once in a while here. Uh, that's about okay. two nautical miles southwest of us. Because it's... Uh, yeah, it's a little squirrely, Messy. isn't it? Yeah. Sure. It's hard to see where you're at. <coughs> this looks a little different. Yeah, the one on no, the I right. I think it's just buried. The, but yeah. uh, uh, let's come in on this video. I'm still trying to get stable. Is this worth a closer look? Yeah, let's let's get a uh, video. Can you come out? I'm I'm gonna land him. Drifting all over. I'm going to range out your sonar in D2. 
Okay. We're at 30 meters now. I think we should bring the ship to a stop if he's going to uh, stop here. No, we'll only he's, be a few uh, seconds. Very good. Yeah, I think he's okay for now. All right, come on back in. Tough to find a focus because it looks like it's out of focus. Yeah, I'm also sliding around a little bit, but yes, it does look out of the animal itself. Yeah, you can see the granules of sand on the exterior, but the interior is soft. Right. <laughs> uh, you could come a little wider, maybe get the whole thing, and then. I think we need to move on. Yeah. All right, coming out. All right, thanks. There's more of your starfish. Yeah. Trying to excavate those was fun. It's normally <laughs> trying to make really smooth, small <coughs> movements. So maybe uh, <coughs> when we get closer to 1 o'clock, the event starts, we can try to find something to zoom in and sit focused on for a little bit while the event's going on. So that's your mission in the next 20 minutes. <laughs> All right, if we can, I mean, if not, we can get zooms on the things we've been seeing. Do some repeats. You're not going to want to stay there for a half hour, though, right? No, but, you know... Okay. At least for the start first, off with yeah. Uh, try to find something opener. interesting. Yeah. yeah, I'm coming back. Okay. So we're somewhere in this. 86 meter <laughs> diameter <laughs> range. So, is that really is that worse than we've seen oh, before? Oh, much, much worse. Yeah. Yeah. Carl's uh, thinking that maybe there's some acoustics uh, from the oil platform interfering with our returns. Maybe. Being inside a soft canyon is pretty bad too. Or any canyon, really. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that's like what we get at six kilometers. Right? Yeah. Or maybe worse. <laughs> <laughs> What's this? Now I'm trying not to generate prop wash again. It might just be some debris, but it looked like it was swimming. That guy above the lasers? Is that what you're yeah. 
You come in, video, see what this is. A shrimp? No. Nope. No. I think some mucus. No. Nope. 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 Oh, some mucus oh, on a, a, I don't know. A tube worm? A well, tube worm. Yeah, it is a tube worm. Really looked like it was swimming. Huh. All right, you can come when it back out when you're ready. Copy bridge, thanks. It is complete. Copy. It's making a trail here. Cucumber? Probably. Yeah, it looks like it. I guess I'll just... Uh, it's like we have a holothurian or sea cucumber there, so and it's leaving a, a trail. And as uh, Scott France noted, um, when we have trails like this, it lets it helps us understand which end of the sea cucumber is the head and which one which end is the tail. This isn't even a, a sea cucumber. It's actually just a fecal cast of Another a move, sea please. cucumber. Three zero meters, bearing zero four zero at zero decimal right, two knots. I guess we're not that interested in this. Good copy, Bridge. It's right where I'd expect a sea cucumber. Bob Carney's noted we're starting to see a bit more of a mottled bottom than we've seen before. So, copy that. Uh, Maybe a little more burrowing. It may be due to the little bit of the slope we have here. At the Bob's not quite as smooth as it was at lower, uh, lower elevations. Yeah, fish. Yeah, that's another tripod fish. Bathypteroys phoenix. So we have about 250 meters to waypoint three and 135 minutes. And there is that trail you were talking about, Adam. I can't see it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have a trail there in an actual holothurian. Point, point so that zero gives five us, uh, four. again, point a zero sense six of where the zero. head is versus the tail in terms of the direction the organism is moving. And as you probably noted, looking at sea cucumbers or holothurians, it, it can uh, be impossible just looking from their exterior to tell uh, which end is the head and, and which is the opposite. Do these guys swim? Looks like they're the swimming variety. So. Maybe you can do that. Poke it. <laughs> Get it to swim. That'd be good for the I just baseball. passed uh, another one of these long-legged <laughs> shrimp, Nematocursinus. And another shrimp. I like where your head is at, Don. Create interest.
Uh, there is a swimming variety. Yep. Come in. Can you kill lasers, co pilot? Lasers off. Thanks. You want to activate the still camera, Don? Sure. Still camera on. Thanks. Header. Just have to follow it for the next 15 minutes, Dave. Yeah. <laughs> Don't lose it. I can do it. Can you guys keep up? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we've got uh, a swimming holotherian here, uh, unofficially known as the headless chicken monster by our ROV team. For obvious reasons, I think. I think it's a fair <laughs> name. I think it's fair. All right, not a whole lot of time left. All right. Yeah, Video, I think we have to let it go. Yeah. I've uh, moved under Sirius. Till next time, headless chicken monster. <laughs> Push out ahead a little bit. Okay. Would be kind of interesting to follow one of those around for a long time. Yeah. Couple more of these Pentathides, Typica, sea cucumbers, to her bottom another uh, glass sponge, Hyalanema. Okay. Uh, but it seems really like the most uh, common fauna here is uh, yeah, actually what we better. don't see is we do we keep seeing these marks angle. that are, are yeah. sea stars. Uh, we did see a couple of exposed fauna uh, that, that Chris uh, identified complete. for us as uh, genus Ditaster. Other common fauna we've seen so Thank far are that, that, uh, that yeah. sea pen, okay. uh, Umbalula, and uh, a few long-legged shrimp, Nematocarcinus. And then in terms of the vertebrates, we've uh, seen two species of tripod fish, uh, both in the same genus, uh, Bathyptoreus. We also saw a, a very interesting uh, Cusk eel, and there was a uh, discussion here in the chat room. I'll go ahead and call another one in, I guess. Sure. And, uh, Bridge, are we now? We did get some really good video, and, and we'll send those out for, for ID. Going to call another one in. Thir 30 meters, 30 meters, bearing 040 at 0 decimal 2 knots. There's a, a white a starfish good just copy. under the camera. Have we seen this as well? Yeah, I believe so. Okay. Copy. As I'm looking in camera two and uh, the serious view of the ROV, I'm starting to see what appears to be ripples on the seafloor again. We seem to have these long linear ripples uh, across the seafloor. Uh, again, indicative of current flow over the bottom. We know these canyons funnel current and uh, we can get elevated current velocities. Or, or high speeds of current flow through these canyons, and it, it looks like there's enough here to uh, pick up the sediment we're seeing and move it and reorganize it into these really long, uh,
pretty regular uh, pattern of, of seabed ripples. Yeah, and again, uh, as you were pointing that out, Adam, uh, at that point, uh, the ROV was pointed due north. Uh, so that would make, the again, the predominant current flow here in the east-west direction, uh, again, parallel to the canyon. Interesting that that's not really what we're seeing today, though. We're seeing it come down the canyon wall um, out of the north, mostly. So it seems to be different than the, the usual flow today. Yeah, roger that. Yeah, just as our pilot noted there, the, the flow that we're seeing today with the vehicle doesn't seem consistent with this ripple orientation. And and that uh, brings to mind we have some general understanding of, of deep sea currents, but, but because of the difficulty of getting here, we have really limited understanding of the, the complexities of water flow near the sea floor in the deep sea. We, we understand Sports water flow at the sea surface uh, much better. Uh, so again, all these observations we're getting are going to help contribute to our understanding Video, of let's try uh, to follow this many bit. facets of deep sea science. Maybe get the lasers on it. Really quick, co-pilot. I think it's very large. That one has to be lasers on. Talk has to be enabled on calls. Okay. Right here, looking. Video, can you come in on this? And you can get rid of lasers when he does. Kill the lasers? Sure, kill lasers. Oh, yeah, here we have a very large, also just to keep you in view about 15 keys. centimeters to body. This is, uh, again, a, a commonly known as the long-legged shrimp. There we go. This is a uh, genus Nematocarcinus. Not transmitting? On three. R on everything. Uh, Roland, the key panel, our RTS has to be enabled for talk. Video can come back out. Okay. Don't I either need to hold the ship or... Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. We're Bridge is RV nav. No, no, we can keep... All right. You want to keep going? Yeah, we can keep okay. going. It's fine. All right. Okay. Uh, All right. Never mind, Bridge. Sorry. Thanks. So I'm going to swing back to starboard to get on heading. Okay. And I'm flying back here. You're flying that way. Okay. Dave, video's going to be switching out here in a bit to uh, so Roland can do this uh, show. Sure. Copy video. Thank you. Watch lead, this is Nav. Yeah, so we're making a pretty good pace up the slope. Um, it feels yellow? comfortable for so us. Back if it feels heading. comfortable Great. for you, we'll continue yeah. at this rate. Uh, but that does mean that we're going to reach the top of the ridge uh, within 45 minutes or so. Or it's top of the canyon wall, sorry, 45 minutes. So is there a plan uh, for what you'd like to do for the remaining time in the dive after that? So get to the top, well, and then you went ahead east. Uh, down slope. That looks, yeah, it's going to be slope. slightly down slope. Um, it looks slightly relatively bit. mild. Um, we'll assess once we get to the top. But I uh, just wanted to get an idea for what you were hoping to do. Okay. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Well, what we can 
rolling. You can monitor here. Thank you for calling this one. Go ahead, watch. Go ahead, watch, Lee. Yeah, you have this one that's plugged in, so you can listen. You can monitor here. Copy, Rich. Okay, so we can plan to go to the northwest, up with up slope. That will work better for us, yeah. Okay, thank you. Move is complete. Different. So I was just going to check. Katie. What's that upper right? Way up there, right? Mm -hmm. um, Something else. Maybe stock. Star. Or the no, stock further. of the thing further ahead. I'm just going to keep ahead. talking. I don't know who can hear me. How do you put in a smiley face? An image. I think this is a a different type of CPAN I'm trying to get into view. And I made a mess. Come in, video. Uh, nope, that's... Not as interesting as I thought. You can come on back out. Looked like a, uh, a feathery sea pen far away, which would have been surprising in this terrain. Maybe you could take a look at the little star there. Yeah, you could do that. So just want to alert everyone to an event that's going to start here uh, about two minutes from now. And we'll have a, a live interaction uh, via the Facebook live chat. Uh, so uh, both our expedition coordinator, Lieutenant Nick uh, Poflenko, and our ROV team uh, supervisor, our Carl McLechie, are going to uh, take questions. So if uh, folks are interested, uh, you can all check that out at the Facebook live chat. And uh, with the Facebook handle, Ocean Exploration Research, all one word. All right, video uh, or not video? Yeah, we're approaching an ophiroid here. Uh, so we've got a, a brittle star. on this? We can go zoom on that. And if I'm not mistaken, I think that is that species that uh, both Scott and and Chris identified as Ophiomusa, I'm and I. Yeah. yeah, that's right, Daniel. Certainly the genus Ophiomusa, um, the species harder to say, although that is a very common species worldwide at these depths. You can uh, take more zoom if you'd like it. Some good heaves, maybe you could come up a few meters down. Okay. Sometimes it can stir up the sediment right below Sirius. Okay. Come back out whenever you're happy. Uh, so we've also had a quick chat with our, our navigator, so we're, we're about 45 minutes or so away from the top of uh, the canyon wall. Um, that's at about 2,600 meters. Uh, after we get there, we we'll still Just have fly around a bit while they're setting up. Quite a bit of bottom time, so we're looking at coming off the bottom at uh, a little after three o'clock Central Time. And so Welcome to the Okeanos Explorer, America's ship for ocean exploration, and thanks for joining us today on our uh, Facebook Live uh, event. Um, I want to, before we get started, I want to thank the shoreboard uh, team that helped set up this event. Our, uh, our engagement team, Emily Crum, Katie Wagner, Amy Bowman, and our partners at the 
uh, Rhode Island Inner Space Center. So really appreciate that. And uh, so we can um, interact with you live via Facebook Live. So thanks for joining us. We'll be uh, taking some questions. My name is Nick Polenko. I'm the expedition coordinator for um, uh, this expedition in the Gulf of Mexico. Currently, we're about 120 miles off the coast in uh, Perdido Canyon, and we're exploring a completely unknown area of the Gulf of Mexico. We didn't even really have good maps of this area until we mapped uh, the area last night. So, um, and with me is uh, Carl McCletchy. Hi, Carl McCletchy. I'm with the Global Foundation for Ocean Exploration. We're a nonprofit engineering group. Um, about 20 engineers from video engineers who are bringing you this video. Um, mechanical engineers, network engineers, satellite engineers, and electrical uh, and software. Uh, we all work together. We design and build all the equipment uh, for the underwater robots and all the topside equipment. And then we also come out and work on it at sea. So if anything breaks, uh, we're the people who will fix it. Um, right now we are diving about 2,800 meters uh, below the sea surface up a canyon wall. Um, in the front row, we have our pilots. We have Dave Casagrande piloting D2. Uh, next to him, we have Dan Rogers as navigator, um, Don Liberatore as co-pilot, and Roland Bryan uh, editing the video. And in the back row, um, we usually have one of our mapping leads. Our mapping lead on this cruise is Mike White. He's not, um, he's taking a break right now. And then next to him, we have our two science leads, um, Adam Skarkey and Daniel Wagner. Adam Skarkey has a um, um, background in geology, and uh, Daniel Wagner has a background in biology. So it's a nice uh, mix. Next to them is uh, Annie White. She's doing some video clipping, part of our video team. That She brings you the great highlight videos you guys enjoy from shore. So um, real quick, while we're talking about the back row, um, our two science leads, they're right, right now they're busy on the phone with scientists from all over the world. Sometimes we'll have up to 100 scientists participating, and they're fielding questions and helping uh, navigate the dive. And um, so we might have a scientist um, in another country even say, hey, we, we'd like to take a closer look at that coral. So our um, back row scientists will put that in, uh, that request into our ROV navigator in the front row and he'll work that out with the pilot. And then also, since the RVs are tethered to the ship, we have to work that out with uh, the ship's bridge. So we'll call up to the ship and ask, say, hey, can we move a little bit closer to that coral? And the ship will move maybe five or 10 meters using a system called dynamic positioning. So it's a really uh, orchestrated team between a lot of people. We go out to sea with about 48 people and we need everybody uh, performing at a high level to get to some of these really remote places to do some of this awesome science. So um, we'll, we'll take it out, we'll uh, kick it off with some questions here. Yeah, so I'm looking at the first question here. Um, it is asking, what is the most exotic piece of equipment on D2 and Sirius? So a little background, D2 and Sirius are the two vehicles. Uh, if you're watching the live feed, there's two camera views. Um, one is Sirius, kind of keeping an eye on everything down below. And uh, down below is D2 doing the close-ups of the seafloor and taking samples. So um, of these two robots, I'd say the most exotic piece of equipment is probably our Kraft Predator Manipulator. Um, this is a, the manipulator that takes all of the samples. It's hydraulically powered, and it can pick up 200 pounds straight out, so it could pick up an adult straight out. But it also has fine enough control to clip a little tiny piece of coral without harming the rest of the coral colony place it in a box for the scientists. Um, so that's probably what I would say is the most exotic. Okay, we got another uh, question from uh, Lisa Mather asking about uh, past data and past dives. Uh, one of the big things about the, ocean, uh, the NOAA Ship for Ocean, um, Oceanic Explorer and the Office of Ocean Exploration and Research, we try to get all our data out there to the public as soon as possible. Not only can you follow along live, but we also have partners at at NCEI that um, upload the data to their uh, digital atlas. And if you go to our website, oceanexplorer.noaa.gov, you could check uh, out uh, some past uh, highlights and dive footage. Okay. You want to take the next question? Yeah, here's a good one actually about uh, both of us. Okay. Um, from Also from Tyler, what does a day of an expedition coordinator Lots of good stuff. and dive supervisor look like? Well, a good sample is today. We. Uh, Woke up at quarter to five and came into the control room here. Um, the mapping team had just finished mapping this canyon. 
uh, which is very close to a, um, under a uh, drill rig. So we had to be very careful to avoid the drill rig. We had that in our charts. We had the new maps. We uh, worked with the science team to pick a dive site. And uh, Navigator made the backgrounds for us. Then we went up on the bridge, checked the weather, uh, made sure everything was ready to dive. And then we basically hand everything over to the rest of the team, um, pilots, video, ship drivers, and uh, get the vehicles launched. And that brings us to where we are today, exploring the seafloor. Yeah, the, the setup and prep going into this dive was, was really amazing. And uh, going coming to this area is a really remote location and being operating close to a rig. A lot of these rigs have um, moorings that extend out sometimes many nautical miles from the actual rig itself. So we had to work with our uh, partners at Boehm and uh, other agencies to get in contact with the rig. And then the rig was also able to um, give us a diagram of their moorings that we in incorporated into our uh, GIS software um, with our mapping team so that we, we were, uh, made sure that we weren't diving near any of these moorings and that there were no entanglement issues for the ROV. So it was, it was really um, an interesting dive and we had to work closely with the ship's command and the bridge operators to uh, make this happen today. So, yeah. yeah. Okay, I see another one here from Catherine. Do the number of creatures you are finding meet your expectations or exceed them? Well, so I'm an engineer, not a marine biologist. Our marine biologist is currently uh, helping to lead this dive. Uh, but I can answer roughly that since these are exploration dives, we never know what we'll find. Um, we were hoping on the last three dives to find rocky terrain uh, that would be covered in coral and sponges. And if you've been watching the last few days, there's been a lot of sediment. So on those dives, I would say the creatures did not meet what we were hoping to find. Um, but that's the point of exploration, and as we ascend this cliff today, uh, we will likely find some rocky bottom um, covered with creatures and potentially new species. Great. Um, we got a question from Victoria. Have you ever collected a sea cu cucumber? I'm not aware that we ever collected. We have? We have? All right. I'm getting, I'm getting a lot of nods in the control room. We have collected a sea cucumber. Yeah. So. Actually, I saw that one. Um, so sea cucumbers are very soft. Uh, the pilot had to carefully pick it up with the manipulator, which I said is delicate, but you can imagine it would even be difficult. It's basically like a soft water balloon. Um, so the pilot did have trouble with that. He did manage to scoop it into the box, and um, we got it up to the uh, scientists on the ship, and they uh, managed to collect it and process it. Okay. Got a question about the asphalt sample from yesterday. Uh, can you explain the oozing that was described? Does the asphalt change uh, once we bring it up to the surface? This is from uh, uh, Jordan Chow. So, yeah, a lot, a lot of these samples, when we do bring them up to the surface, they Thanks, do Bridge. change, mostly the biological Thanks. samples. The asphalt sample, I believe, stayed pretty much intact and, and was uh, very similar to um, how we uh, observed it. But uh, thank, great, great question. Thanks for asking. Cool. All right, here's a good one for me from Shireen Gonzaga, what factors go into selecting a dive site? Um, so the dive sites, this is an exploration ship, as I said, uh, but we do guide each dive um, based on input from potentially 100 scientists on shore. There's geologists, archaeologists, and marine biologists. So um, Nick was involved in uh, multiple planning calls before the cruise. Everyone gets on the phone and um, talks about which areas in the were in the Gulf. Now, which areas in the Gulf interest them? Um, there were four potential shipwreck sites that were selected by the archaeologists. Um, today would be more of a biology site looking for a steep terrain with rocks. So all the biologists get together um, on the phone. And everyone agrees on different sites around the Gulf uh, that we will look at each day. And a lot of times we'll get these dive sites and we'll say, hey, hey, Carl, what do you think? Do you think we could dive on this site? Is this, you know, is it too close to the rig or the things we have to worry about? So it's really important that we have our partners from GFOE uh, help us navigate that. And uh, planning for all these expeditions happens months in advance, sometimes even years, where we're getting input from all over uh, the scientific community, bringing people together, and really try and um, have community-driven exploration where uh, different uh, areas of interest are proposed by scientists, discussed, and that's how we came up with our dive selections for this expedition. So it's a, it's a really um, a long process, but it really, as you'll see in today's dive, uh, produces some uh, rewarding results. Okay, from 
Little one Nair, have there been many creatures that act aggressive towards the ROV? Um, I've been doing this eight years. I think we're on the 400th dive of D2. And in my memory, they're, the only aggressive creatures maybe have been a couple of squid that were attracted to the lights. And they've actually grabbed onto the light bars, wrapped around, uh, and wouldn't let go. They, they ride it for a while, and then eventually they let go. Um, a few sharks have approached closely to do two, maybe attracted by the lights or the uh, electrical fields, but they haven't actually made any attempt to contact uh, Deep Discover. Yeah, on our website, um, there's a lot of highlight films that you go through at uh, oceanexplorer.noaa.gov. You can see some of these, uh, these clips. And, and Carl's been at this for a long time. I started sailing with Carl in uh, 2013. And um, well, yeah, we've seen a lot of exciting dives together. Okay, here's one um, from Yasin Safaya. Sorry if I mispronounced that. Are there any newly discovered creatures in 2018? So this is the first expedition of 2018. We're on dive five. Um, we're in the Gulf of Mexico, which is uh, for you know all of the bodies of water in the world. It's fairly well explored, um, being a kind of center for oil, oil exploration and um, close to the United States. So currently, we haven't found any new species. We do hope to. Um, I believe maybe two dives ago in the water column, um, there was a tinafor one of those translucent, colorful creatures that um, some of the scientists believe might have been a new species. But since they're um, too soft to collect in the water column, we weren't able to collect it um, to get DNA and verify that. OK, um, I got a question for uh, slope a little more to from north. Tristan O'Malley asking about intern opportunities and uh, sailing on NOAA ships. Um, Throughout NOAA, not just uh, NOAA's Office of Ocean Exploration and Research, there's lots of internship opportunities. And I, I highly encourage you to um, research some of those. I think if you, even if you just Google NOAA internships, you'll have a ton of links that pop up and lots of great opportunities. And also at uh, other universities that also have uh, sailing vessels, there's opportunities to get underway and at sea. From Ed Carter, I've been following for several seasons. Love your work. Thank you. How will you implement new sonar innovation? Um, so on the vehicle, I can speak to the vehicle side. Uh, we have mapping experts who deal with the sonars on the ship. Um, on the vehicles right now for sonar, we have each vehicle has a scanning sonar, which just simply sweeps a beam in front of it, kind of like a radar that a ship is mounted on a ship. And it makes a two-dimensional image of any hard returns in front of it, like rocks, shipwrecks, or cliffs. Um, it's fairly simple technology. It's very, you know, it looks out a lot further than our cameras and really helps us navigate. But we would really like to uh, implement some new technology, perhaps a, a multi-beam on D2 or Sirius that can look out twice as far and make 3D images of the seafloor ahead of us. Uh, it would allow us to move a lot more quickly, um, anticipate what's ahead of us, because right now we can only see as far as the lights can see with the uh, cameras, which is on a bad visibility day, maybe just um, 10 or 20 feet on a good day, 30 or 40. Yeah, to turn his head. OK, yeah. we got a good Working question slow. from uh, Tyler Cronbush. Um, was the cable short and emergency recovery one of the more challenging issues you've had to deal with while being dive super, or there or is another moment that comes to mind? And I, I'll let Carl weigh on this, but before he does, I just want to say that going to some of these really remote places of the world and trying to dive down to almost four nautical miles, you know, it, it, there's definitely some challenges and the pressures, and, and not only with the ROV, but with the ship. So it, it takes a full team out at sea of 48 people to make that happen. So we're, we've definitely had some situations um, and issues over the years, but thanks to the training and the professionalism and, and the SOPs developed for these uh, procedures, um, they, they've been handled uh, very well, and we haven't had any issues. But if you want to weigh in, Carl, too. Uh, yeah, I agree with what Nick said. Um, but from the perspective of the dive supervisor who um, is kind of oversees the launches and recoveries, those two incidents that Tyler mentions um, were probably the most uh, difficult situations we had. And one, um, the seven kilometer cable that goes from the ship to Sirius had to shorten it. It was 12 years old. And um, we're not exactly sure what happened, but 
there was a short, the vehicles went dead. So instead of being able to drive to the surface and drive them towards the ship, we, uh, we actually just had to recover them as if they were, you know, just uh, still objects, except they were still very expensive still objects. So that was quite a challenging recovery. Um, and then the emergency recovery is actually when the lift line that we used to pull D2 back on board, um, it actually had an issue. So instead we had to drive D2 closer to the ship stern in big seas, and then the uh, deck crew had to hook it with an emergency hook uh, that they did by hand. Um, that was also quite challenging. That was that was awesome. I wasn't on board for that cruise. Uh, it wasn't awesome that the issue happened, but the way the, the ship's crew handled it, uh, I think it was A.B. James Scott was able to hook the ROV with this long pole and this little hook and sees up to six feet hanging over the side. He hooked it on his first try. And then um, our uh, uh, BGL, uh, Michael Collins, was also there. And we really got a, we're really fortunate that we have a great deck crew that was able to uh, handle that, that recovery. It's a real team effort. Yeah, and that, that hook is a, another specialized piece of equipment. D2 weighs 10,000 pounds or five tons. And that hook has to be able to be put on the end of a long pole to reach out and hook D2. So it's a custom titanium hook that we made just for that uh, contingency. And that was the first and hopefully only, only time we had to bring it out. Okay. Um, what are you hoping to learn, discover about deep sea corals on this expedition? That's, that's a fantastic question. And yesterday's dive, um, one of the reasons we dove on that site is because using different predictive models, our coral scientists thought there was a high likelihood that there might be corals in this area. So that's how that dive site was selected. And we were able to kind of ground truth that on yesterday's dive. So we're always looking for new areas where we might find things like coral because they help other uh, things in the ocean um, live. Thanks, Bridge. All right, here's one from Mona Nagad. How deep can the ROV go? So our vehicle system can go six kilometers deep, uh, 6,000 meters below the seafloor. And um, that is limited both by the cable. Um, it's actually an interesting engineering fact that a steel cable hanging in the ocean can only support about six kilometers of its own weight before it breaks. So if you have steel hanging down to the ocean, can only go about that deep um, so before the see. cable so can't even it support its own weight, let alone the weight of the vehicles. There we go. Um, so that's a general okay, limit okay, for uh, kind of tethered vehicles top. such as ours. Cool. Um, but also every housing on the vehicle that's full of air that has computers or cameras in it um, needs to take that pressure, which is about 10,000 pounds per one. square inch yeah. Yeah. or uh, five tons that's on every square inch. Yeah. So most of our um, nice pressure housings are titanium or stainless steel, very all. carefully designed to take that deep ocean okay. pressure. Still camera. Okay, we got a good question from um, uh, Michelle Bowman. What What is yeah, one or two surprising zero. things that you have found? And I, I think that's one of the most exciting things being on the Okeanos Explorers. Like we three never three know what we're gonna see. We try to go to completely one. unexplored areas on every expedition, every we'll dive, it where it, it's a lot of times it's unknown. Um, a few, a few come to mind. Um, I know uh, one of uh, the expeditions. I think in the Gulf, we were looking at um, a possible shipwreck or a possible anomaly, and that a lot of people were really excited about. And uh, it, it turned up it wasn't a shipwreck. It ended up being a tar lily. So, um, it was, but it was a really interesting geological feature, um, and we got some great footage of that as well. Okay, from uh, Dave Freestad. When will the marine archaeology dives be taking place on this expedition? Which ships are they? Um, well, a little background. We, the first two dives of this expedition were marine archaeology. We uh, dove on a, um, a target. No one knew what it was, but it turned out to be uh, the tugboat New Hope. Um, it sank in a hurricane in 1965. The crew were rescued by a Coast Guard helicopter. We found a news article um, related to it. So that was an interesting one. Uh, the next uh, shipwreck dive, dive two, um, was an uh, old wooden wreck. Um, I, don't, I haven't heard from the archaeologists if they have any sort of idea on what type of ship it was, but it was just the wooden ribs uh, of a ship with some bits of plumbing inside. Um, and I know, I believe in about a week, we have what I hope to be the most uh, very interesting engineering dive. It looks like a, a copper-clad wreck um, with a lot of bottles and artifacts inside. And uh, there was one autonomous underwater vehicle image taken of it, so that's how we know 
that uh, we know generally what it looks like, but we'll be the first people to get any detailed images of it. Yeah, and please uh, check back at our website for updates on the, those kind of dives. Um, mm -hmm. And also want to acknowledge uh, our folks at uh, BOEM, our partners, Jack Irons, and, uh, and also uh, at NOAA, Frank Cantellas, for helping us um, identify these uh, potential marine cultural heritage sites. Mm -hmm. And then also, uh, again, the marine um, archaeological community together to discuss the priorities in the Gulf of Mexico. So big thanks to both of them. Okay, from uh, Daniel Jardim, how long does it take to get the ROV back to the surface? Uh, so the, uh, we have the ROV and we have Sirius. Sirius is hanging from a steel cable, uh, which we have to haul in with our traction winch. And the maximum speed of that winch is about 30 meters a minute. So you get, um, for a 3,000 meter dive, it's about 100 minutes, which today's dive is. Um, when we go to the full 6,000, that's 200 minutes or over three hours to ascend, and we also had to descend at three hours. So um, for our deepest dives, we actually spend six hours in the water column. We've got a, a good question here from uh, Mr. Jerome. Um, how would you ascend to a dive supervisor position? And that's uh, it's a really unique field and a really specific. I know GFOE does a lot of on-the-job training. Mm -hmm. Carl's been out to sea for I don't even know how many years. And uh, maybe, maybe you can tell us a little bit about it, Carl. Uh, it's hard to count. Some About nine years I've been coming out on this ship. Um, I started off as one of the, actually, one of the two youngest guys. Uh, came out with a great group and uh, started off just cleaning the winch and, uh, you know, helping people uh, work on the ROVs. And I've slowly worked up, uh, learned, learned everything I could, and... Um, now I'm the dive supervisor or ROV team lead, kind of organizing um, how our team works on the ship. But I mean, really most of us have been out for um, four to eight years and everyone uh, knows their job so well that, uh, you know, it's, they, make, they make the position easy. Um, and a good example of someone who just started, uh, Lars Murphy, who was navigator earlier, he just graduated from URI last year with his um, degree in ocean engineering. And uh, he's he came out, this was his first cruise ever with us. And he's uh, just like I started eight years ago, he's starting, um, he's running the winch, uh, learning the navigator position, helping us with vehicle maintenance. And um, if he sticks with it for another few years, so work his way up. Yeah, and Carl not only has, you know, is an expert in his field, but he also has a very broad knowledge of all ROV operations and big picture kind of focus. And we're always talking about safety concerns and making sure we put the least amount of risk to uh, our uh, ROV when we uh, launch and recover. Okay. Possible, yeah. I just saw one. Um, is it useful for crew members to have uh, scuba diving experience? So within the ROV team, uh, most of us do recreational like scuba diving just now. because we love the water and we uh, travel to interesting places. Um, but through work, I've never actually scuba uh, gone scuba diving. You know, we the ROV, we generally work between uh, 250 meters and 6,000 meters. So there's not much overlap um, with scuba. However, on the ship's crew side, there are always three or four uh, scoop, certified scuba divers on board. And they're, um, I'm not sure the certification they get, but it's uh, pretty technical. They do have to dive around the hull at sea if there's trouble with uh, um, any of the um, propellers, rudders, um, doing hull maintenance. They do have to dive at the dock and at sea to uh, help fix the ship. We got a, a question from uh, Mr. Uh, Chris Lasitra from uh, Internet Cafe in Florida. And he's asking, are there any plans to research invasive lionfish effects on the marine uh, ecosystem of the Gulf and southeast uh, coast of the United States. And I can tell you on this expedition, um, that hasn't been a, a priority identified by scientists, but uh, we're also uh, starting to kick off uh, our Aspire campaign meters from, um, here uh, shortly. And right now we're trying to get input from the marine science community, and if that's identified as a priority, that could very well happen. So thank you, uh, Mr. Lissitra, for your comment. That was a good one. Yeah. Okay, uh, from Victoria Gill, are you doing any midwater dives? Um, so a midwater dive, uh, for everyone who doesn't know, means we never actually see the seafloor. 
we keep the RVs in the water column, uh, moving them up and down and trying to find areas where there's high concentrations of midwater species. Um, jellyfish and uh, tinafores are common down there. Um, they're very photogenic creatures. We do look for fish too, but of course the fish can move faster than us, so if they don't want uh, to be in the bright lights, they just move away, so we don't often find them. Um, and we get excellent imagery in the midwater. It's a huge part of the world. I mean, the seafloor is, you know, two-dimensional down there, but if you're in 6,000 meters of water, there's a lot more going on in all the layers of the water column. Um, so I think Nick can answer. I believe we have one or two playing this cruise. That's right, right, absolutely. Uh, well, one full day of uh, midwater, and then also um, maybe we'll extend some dives later on the cruise, but very important. Got a question from uh, Jane Garrison, uh, mapping, asking about mapping areas for this expedition. Real quick, I just want to talk about Sorry, mapping. Is, um, the Okanagan Explorer is always doing operations. We're operating 24 hours a day. So when we're um, on site do, conducting an ROV dive, our mapping team is uh, uh, taking a look at the next dive site for the following so. day. Overnight, once we arrive on site, we'll map that area. And it's, it's been pretty exciting. On a few of these uh, dive sites, we're able to actually see some underwater gas seeps with our sonars. And it was really exciting for the marine science community. Some of these gas seeps no one even knew about, and it's um, a credit to our mapping team. We're really good at their craft, led by Mike White, and then um, also Charlie Wilkins on board. So it's a, it's a great team effort, and uh, that helped influence our um, dive the following day. So always, uh, so we're, we're all either ROV operations or we're mapping. Your, uh, so. Yeah, without the mapping team, our job would be so much more difficult. Every day they provide us with the terrain we're going to be diving on, um, usually in uh, about 25, um, I guess, 25 meter pixels. So it doesn't get high resolution of individual rocks, individual boulders, but we get a general idea of where we're going. And uh, it helps us immensely to pick dive sites and uh, keep the dive safe. Another question from uh, Victoria Gill, ever explored WW2 ships? And uh, one of our recent um, dives, uh, when we were in uh, off of the coast of Hawaii, on the anniversary of Pearl Harbor, we were able to visit a marine cultural heritage site that was uh, a Japanese mini sub. So that that was a very uh, special dive. And mm -hmm. so yeah, yeah. We just spent a couple of years in the Pacific, and um, we did dive on a few other World War II shipwrecks, and um, we did have one expedition up to uh, explore all the aircraft carriers uh, from the Battle of Midway. Um, unfortunately. The weather up there was so bad, we actually missed um, all those dives. We're hoping maybe we'll head back to the Pacific in a couple of years and uh, get to look for those. Great. Well, I think we're wrapping up here, but I just want to thank everybody for joining us on this uh, Facebook Live event. We hope that you continue to follow us along on our website and uh, watching our live video. And uh, talk to you soon. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you, everyone. It's largest holotherium. It's a holotherium oh. feeding. Yeah. Sure, let's get lasers on if they are. Lasers. Aren't. Copy that. Want to put the digital still on too? As we're coming? Um, sure. Okay. What monitor number is that? Uh, 12. 12. 12. That's that, that unlabeled. Go. Okay. All right. Pilots, I'm back on the comms with you. All right. Let's Kill the lasers. Let's Kill the lasers. <laughs> I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> so at the conclusion of our Facebook interaction, uh, we've got both our uh, science co-leads back here. And, uh, so we check out this uh, holotherian. Yeah, That's and, probably good done. and yeah. Adam was like a muscled dog next to me. Still with camera uh, off. Uh, Thanks, Tom. Getting all excited about some of those um, sedimentary rock layers. Huh. But I was unable oh, to talk to us. that's a freeze frame of the last... Uh, oh, yeah, they yeah. muted me for all the good geology. Fire uh, drill I don't know. Yeah.
Video swapping back out. Can you come out on this first? Just come wide. Too late. Too late. <laughs> In a real fire drill. In a real fire, we'd be hauling them. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Videos, whenever Bob you get Carney's settled down, can this is a benthotheria. Yeah, can you get some more speed by putting the two pumps on down in the winch room? I think <laughs> we discussed that, and I think yeah, so that's a different species. Yes. What that um, can't come up much faster in D2 though. Yeah, no. so yeah, you'd be you can pulling D2 you'd upward. You'd be pulling it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can do which that. in an emergency yeah. uh, would be. Might ruin the tether, but get the vehicle back. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So, Why so, so it can search? maybe uh, Don and Dave, if you guys want to oh, sure. swap seats when you're comfortable. Okay. So we can what? <laughs> ah, yeah. Thanks, Bridge. So move. So move is complete. Uh, Sirius will still be swinging for a couple minutes. Yeah, so we'll so need to we're push just out going ahead. for a personnel change yeah, here with our ROV piloting team. And so we'll just hang tight here for, for a couple minutes. Yeah. Uh, again, we're about 100 meters or so away from push wind, out as soon as you're ready. Um, you Say know, again. Should make that, um, push forward as soon as you're well ready. Before yep. our okay. I left you in all, all autos. Are the dive. Yeah. Uh, so we are going to be coming up. Uh, from the seafloor a little after three o'clock uh, local time, central time. It's been about an hour and a half from now. And then for those folks who are interested in tomorrow's dive, we will have a planning call uh, around 3.15, so about 15 minutes after we come up from bottom. Uh, and tomorrow's dive, we're going to be changing in focus, so we'll, we'll start he um, heading back east. Um, we'll be diving in the Hidalgo Basin uh, and this is a, a site uh, that was proposed to us uh, uh, by the Flower Garden Banks National Marine Sanctuary. And yeah, for those interested, um, can, can we get a quick uh, zoom in on that? On the fish? Yep. So you're looking looking at? back okay. at you. Yep. Maybe come up a few meters, Dave. Yep, I am. Okay. Okay, video zoom Should in. Should be just about settled out. As I come around here. And yeah, so this is uh, Acanthonomus armatus. And a uh, fairly uh, conspicuous uh, species, also widespread, uh, imaged a number of times, uh, including in the, when the Okanos was back in, the, in Puerto Rico a couple years ago. Okay, let, let them go. go. We got to push ahead. current really is strong, isn't it? Yeah. We're having to really push against it. Straight down now. Well, I'm kicking it ahead 80% at times here. Sure. Come on up. I 
So yeah, that, that Cuskio species I was referring to. Yeah. Uh, it's a very widespread uh, species, friend, uh, throughout several of our oceans, including the Atlantic and Pacific. And there's another. Uh, hey, Dave, do you want to move in? Or a penetralacin. Yeah. Do you want to get a move in? Oh. Understood. Uh, yeah, we could do that. Okay. Does a three, you want to do three, four, five, or does that work? Looks pretty. Uh, yeah, that's roughly up close. Slope. Okay. You ready for that, Don? Yeah, sure. Okay. We'll do 30 meters, three, four, five. Bridge, this is RV nav. So yeah, tomorrow's dive, um, again, for those who are interested, uh, we're going to be diving on Hidalgo yeah. Basin. Yeah, this is going to be a toe, slightly yeah. shallow like a dive, move, uh, about uh, 1,000. Uh, 30 uh, meters, that's three zero meters, uh, bearing 345 at, uh, at zero decimal two the Flower minutes. Garden Banks National Marine Sanctuaries. Uh, it is one of that's a good uh, copy. the several areas that has been proposed for expansion under Alternative 5 of the Flower Garden Banks National Marine Sanctuary. Uh, so the sanctuary currently uh, includes uh, three uh, mostly shallow banks so that goes into mesophotic depths, so east-west uh, flower garden banks and Stetson banks, uh, but there have been proposals uh, to expand the sanctuary uh, to include several other um, mesophotic banks, and uh, there's also proposals to um, potentially consider some, some deep water um, areas for, for inclusion and, and many of these deep water areas haven't been uh, surveyed um, and so we are trying to provide more information that can help decision makers uh, understand um, how to best manage these areas uh, using the appropriate conservation uh, strategies and uh, yeah for, for tomorrow's dives uh, uh, based on what we know of the area uh, there were about uh, three dives uh, just uh, about three kilometers south of the area and uh, they did record some seeps and chemosynthetic communities um, so hopefully that will be uh, kind of what we also see tomorrow and then the day after that we will have a dive um, again going a little bit deeper that's going to be about 2500 meters or so uh, in a mutt volcano uh, so there's a nice conical feature uh, very distinctive in, in an existing multi-beam. So yeah, again, for this expedition, uh, there was a, a broad input from the community to try to pick priority sites. Uh, this process started uh, really last September with the planning of the 2017 Gulf of Mexico expedition when uh, people proposed areas. Uh, then in November, the Okeanos explorers spent 23 days here in the Gulf of Mexico and surveyed a bunch of those areas, but uh, there were actually more proposals put forward at that time that uh, what could be covered, and, and so we, we took some of those proposals into uh, consideration for this expedition. In addition, we opened up uh, again f uh, to the community for, for additional uh, proposed sites. Uh, and I uh, yeah, appreciate everybody's submissions. Uh, a lot of folks uh, went on and used the sea sketched and proposed areas for priorities. And uh, there was a wide spectrum of different disciplines and interests, uh, including archaeologists, uh, midwater folks, um, coral folks, uh, people studying uh, chemosynthetic communities and, uh, and canyon systems. Uh, so we tried... Uh, How far away from the top? Uh, uh, to cover both geographically meters, so. And um, we're just going to make our way northwest uh, by discipline to try to have a balanced Kenyan approach and to try to get edge. to all of these areas. And uh, so, yeah, this today we'll 
be the first week of this uh, expedition, and after that we'll have two more weeks. Again, this is the westernmost point um, uh, of the expedition, and we'll start uh, moving back across the Gulf uh, eastward uh, with the last day of the uh, of diving operations being um, May 2nd, and that's going to take us uh, just south of... Uh, Key West, uh, a couple of really interesting features, uh, really steep drop-offs. Quick zoom on this little crab here, I think it is. Yep. Yes, and this is, uh, so this is a very interesting association. So this is the genus Simpergurus. Yeah. And this genus is widespread, uh, but the uh, really far. interesting thing is that they have the symbiotic association uh, with these anemones that are, are grown on their back. Uh, uh, Co-pilot, can you take the camera, please? Sure. Yeah, let me see if I can. You want me to tilt now? Yes, please. Coming up. Yep. That's okay. a nice shot. Try and sit down. I'll wait. Yeah. Okay. Good. Yeah, tilt down. down. Yep. Holding. Okay. All so right, Daniel. So going back to uh, biology 101, this is a symbiotic relationship here. We've got two species that are living together and. Uh, is this a uh, more of a mutualistic no. symbiotic relationship or commensal? I don't think it's parasitic. I don't think Not one's harming sure. the other for its own benefit. But uh, what would be the nature of this relationship? Do you think? Yeah. So I definitely, yeah, it's definitely not parasitic. Uh, so uh, I, I believe it's commensal. Uh, so yeah, the the anemone, of course, is getting a, a place to live on. Uh, I don't know what benefit the crab has. Uh, so. Down, slow to fall. Uh, okay. Yeah, I don't know that much. I, I, and so there's a, a request if we can zoom in on the anemones if possible. Okay. Good copy, thanks. I think he's crawling down. under us. Yeah, yeah he's going under. If I ease up, maybe we can back down a little bit. And yeah, so. Let's see. Let's see. Well, some yeah, dust. there's a couple of comments here yeah, in the chat. We're going to lose oh. them. There we go. Well, they just got yeah, fed. Jill, I noted that they possibly cup coral, so it was hard to see. We'll, we'll try to get a close-up here, Jill. Um, Hi, guys. They are cup corals, and this is the I'm hermit crab of the tilt. genus Parapagoras. Yeah. Well, I'm digging in pretty good there. Uh, excellent. Uh, thanks, Mary. Sorry about that, guys. It's, just it's right under us. It's yeah. Really hard to get. Yeah, no, yeah. No worries. Thanks, pilot. Okay. Giving your camera back. Yeah. Go ahead. You have it. And you stowed the port lower swing arm? Uh, I didn't. Had you stowed? Oh, there it is. It was just uh, oh, it's uh, it's skewered by the cloud. Lost in the Excellent. Haze, yeah. yeah. Thanks, Jill, for noting that. Uh, squid. Serious view. Uh, Jill had noted this uh, yeah, first that they were not anemones but, but cup corals. Uh, so cup corals are, are scleractinian, so they're, they're in the same group as uh, well, commonly known as the stony uh, corals. Uh, so they are uh, differentiated from the anemones in that they do have a calcareous skeleton and uh, anemones having a true soft body. So the move is complete, uh, Dave. Just finished a couple of minutes ago. Okay. We could do uh, another once he gets done. Yeah. Yeah, pushing ahead. Okay. Uh, any clipping? Do you have a headset? 
there was maybe a Dumbo octopus in Sirius view a minute or two ago. All right, cool. Pilot, if we can get a uh, quick zoom in on that object left of center. Okay, let's see. Video zoom in. Yeah, thanks, Scott. It hasn't quite stabilized enough, but uh, here we go. Yeah, and Tina Molotsova, who's joining us all the way from uh, the P.P. Shershov uh, Institute of, of Oceanology in Russia, also agrees with that ID. Uh, and thank yeah, you. So this would be um, another octic coral, and it's a member of the uh, true soft coral group of octic corals. Some people use the term soft coral to apply to all octic corals, but um, I don't like that term because a lot of them have a very hard skeleton inside them. But the uh, soft corals, the family Nephiidae, of which this would be one, basically that main axis and the branches are inflated, and uh, there's no hard internal axial skeleton. They still have sclerites, the microscopic calcium carbonate elements, but they don't have an internal skeleton. So that would be a first, I think, for the expedition. Yeah, it is. Now, are we moving? No, the ship is stopped. Okay. Okay, try that video. Looks like that lift land is getting a little bigger, huh? I'm watching it. I don't think it's changed since I sat down. Okay. And Scott, if you don't mind, if you can just type right. that into uh, either the chat room. Yeah. I've already put Still it into... Uh, oh, see, Scott, perfect. It's more like... Uh, yeah, but now as we're getting a closer look, of course, we had to stabilize the ROV I mean, I and get it's a just, closer look yeah, to prove could, me wrong. The sausage is um, you can see as we're too. looking down yeah. through the polyps, you see there's this it's white line underneath. Like and and that would be the axial of rod of a C-pen. But this is actually a C-pen. And I can't quite see if the polyps are arising from what we call polyp leaves or little arms, or if they're coming directly out of that central axis. Not much contrast. Um, all those uh, no, purple bits you see are basically the pharynx, so they extend from the mouth and it's going down into the stomach, and it's uh, got that purple pigmentation. And then below that, the clear area. Yeah, tilt up, be, yeah, uh, tilt up for you, please. Cavity, Thank you. The stomach, so. Uh, this is actually a sea pen, another octocoral, but one that does have an internal axis, and like the others that we've seen today, um, is rooted in the mud. Um, I wonder if this is uh, Anthopolum, possibly. Yeah, oh, I see Tina Molotsova is suggesting also the genus Anthopolum, so uh, that's what we'll go with. Um, good close-up, guys. Thank you. Yeah, and thanks, Scott, and, and thanks, uh, Tina, for, for that ID. Do you want to throw the lasers on it, too, just quick? I think you're zoomed past. Okay, video back out. And there we go. Oh, right. Tip up. Still yeah. the tilt. There you go. Okay. Okay, watch lead. You're done with this, then? Yeah, thanks, pilot. Okay. Give me the camera back. Okay, yeah, thank you, yeah, Dave. Straight down. 
All right. Yeah, and I'm looking here, uh, Scott, at the checklist of, of, of re recorded species from the Gulf of Mexico, and I only see Anthoptylum grandiflorum, which that is not. So I don't, I don't know if there's any interest. I mean, we've seen a couple of them for a possible collection. Yeah, I think there's still uh, plenty to be learned about the, uh, the sea pen diversity in the Gulf. Um, when you say only anthoptylum is recorded, you mean in the deep Gulf, or you mean in that particular family? Um, it, well, it's in the checklist for for the Gulf of Mexico, the deep sea. Yeah, there's just a single, a single species, and that uh, that's the uh, the Cairns and Bear. Yep. Well, and uh, the modified since then. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, then I agree. Um, let's see. It's what quite a loop that's, that's come out on the tail. Uh -huh. um, I would agree that that would be a good collection yeah, target for that one again. Sounds great, Scott. Yeah, and uh, we'll keep our eyes open. So, yeah, we, we are on the move, yes. but um, we did see two, and, and hopefully we'll continue to see them. But as long as it doesn't get any bigger. Uh, just as a reminder of a, for our shore based scientists, so we, we do have the ability recovery. to sample, but uh, uh, the samples uh, we could, uh, we're trying to uh, right okay. use for a specific purpose. So, uh, samples uh, should be either uh, uh, new species okay. or, or new okay. records for a region, or either a, 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 a commonly observed yeah, like, uh, uh, organism that cannot be identified. Meters, three zero meters, bearing three, uh, four, so that's five, for the biologicals and then for, for geology. Uh, we also have the ability to collect uh, one or two rock samples for per uh, uh, per dive. Uh, yeah, of we're course, we're trying to balance this with the other priorities fishing. of the dive is to get uh, good close-ups as well as uh, cover some ground. Uh, so we're trying to achieve uh, all those objectives in, in every dive. And uh, I believe that's uh, that uh, Ditaster, uh, if I'm not mistaken, that Chris Ma identified for us earlier. Yeah, okay, so we, no need to stop on that? Yeah, that's a Roger. Okay. So I would say, since you are just about stretched out, so you got a little bit of slack, but maybe you could kind of yeah, come to side to side and yep. um, take your time a bit as serious catches up, move his underway. Yeah, so okay. Annie, who is uh, uh, clipping here next to me and is following the, the overhead serious uh, video, uh, attently uh, noted uh, very great footage there of a... Uh, uh, of a squid, and I believe that's that Ornithuthus antelarum uh, that uh, Mike Vecchione had identified for us. So, yeah, that. And I wish I could, like, draw a mark on that line. So, yeah, there's some uh, remarkable <laughs> yeah. footage there on the overhead series. So, uh, I'm probably going to make it into the highlight. Starting to get pretty far out there. Well, there's quite a bit of current pushing you uh, sideways. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Uh, so we're at 2,650 so meters. Here, yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, it did. Looks like we are. Um, it's got to be coming out of the sausage, though. Yeah, uh, pretty to close. Be, I don't think uh, there's that much slack from the top. Along the tether. Uh, looks like we're at 
looks oh, like a. What was that just went by? Uh, looks like a Tino four just yeah. passed us. Yeah, I would get him in here again and just look at it. And uh, so yeah, the ROV team had noted that there is uh, quite a bit of current here that they're dealing with, and. Uh, You can start seeing that, uh, yeah, from the, again here, from the east to where it's the west, we're pointed almost er, directly uh, north, and uh, you can see quite a bit of current. Yeah, it's looking good, Don. I guess you're still out there a little ways, but maybe you yeah. want to come back. I'll come, okay. Or, uh, or at least maybe you could keep saddling to the side. Side, yeah. Not go too much further forward. Mm -hmm. Okay. Move is underway, though, right? Yeah. Yeah, it looks like a small fish there. Maybe if we can get a snap soon. Uh, oh, I see it, yes. Video, zoom, snap zoom on this little. Yeah. Hold on a second, let me come around. And it's not no, a no, fish No, no, it's yet. not. It's <laughs> yeah, that's okay, thanks. Okay. Okay, video wide again, thank you. It's gotta be. Yeah, and uh, Tina had noted there that as we zoomed in, as uh, a little piece of seaweed, or sargassum. We have another hour. Yep. Copy bridge, thanks. Yeah. Just complete me. Copy. Yeah. Hang out here for a minute while yeah. we discuss. Yeah, it looks like another anemone. Looks like they're turning off the aft thruster. Yeah, pretty heavily sedimented again. Say again. They're turning off the aft thruster on Sirius. Oh. The uh, view from Sirius in camera two gives you a real sense of the slope we're on here. And uh, we saw a little bit earlier some exposed substrate rock, but we're back into an area of sediment cover now. But we seem to be at a, a fairly steep angle and about, about the angle we might expect some uh, underlying rock to be exposed. So uh, as we make our way up the uh, canyon wall, we will keep our eyes out for uh, habitat changes, uh, especially surrounding substrate. Off, and... Uh, uh, see if we don't see some uh, 
different changes here as we move up in elevation and then uh, after that a little bit to the west right. along the rim of the canyon. Um, I could do another move here for you. You ready? It's like some more of this. Unless you want to actually want to look at this. Quick zoom on this video, just see what it is. It's a little hard to tell what we're seeing here. You can see some bedded rock underneath, which shows that there's uh, hard rock immediately underneath a very thin cover of sediment. So, uh, but what, in terms of what this rough material on the surface is, it's, it's, uh, it's a little hard to tell uh, right now. I can't tell if that's, uh, is that possibly biological? Uh, it doesn't seem like it. Uh, this, this may be just some rubble that, that's failed and laying across the, the surface of the sediment. Uh, it's, it's got a little bit of sediment cover itself. Huh. Well, now as we move into this area, it's almost like uh, we're seeing some low bait features. It's a bit strange. Uh, but into here, this looks more like, again, like some rock rubble. Maybe some rock material that's fallen from above along the slope. Go back wide video, please. Video, can you go wide, please? Thank you. Yeah, Robert Carney suggesting these may be burrow cast, and that, that's certainly possible. We uh, oftentimes in seafloor environments like this where organisms have burrowed into the sediment, uh, those burrow holes get filled in and cast or form. And sometimes that material can solidify into a, a cast that's that remains. And so uh, there were certainly a lot of sort of cylindrical and low bait shaped features there, which certainly suggest uh, burrow cast. Um, so uh, a little bit of a mystery there to puzzle through, but um, we are back into uh, bedded sedimentary rock here exposed to the surface. So we, we are seeing a change in substrate. Uh, and much like yesterday's dive, we're not seeing a lot of organisms uh, that colonize hard substrate yet, likely because of the instability uh, of this, this surface. Uh, but as we continue to move up the uh, wall, it's possible we may start to see uh, more of those organisms. Yeah, that looks like some fresh burrowing, maybe. Just left of the lasers. Mm -hmm. Quick zoom video. If it's just me, I'm picking up sort of a red. Uh, I see that as pink well. Coloration yeah, pink here. Color. That's um, not typical of what we've been seeing. Most fresh burrows are sort of white in color. Could it be bacterial? That's I don't usually know. white, isn't it? That's a good question. We still uh, have him move on, or did he stop? Oh, uh, we're stopped. We're right stopped. Now. Okay.
Doesn't look like it's getting bigger now, Dave. Just the same. I think it's the same. Yeah, I think we can keep making our way up slope. Copy that. Okay. Get another move. Yeah. Okay. The bridge, this is RV nav. Another move, please. 30 meters, three zero meters, bearing three, four, five. Or actually, stand by on that, sorry. Actually, that does, that looks a little off, doesn't it? Should we turn more to starboard? Yeah. Yeah, it looks yeah, like it. We yeah. should. Yep. Um, zero, zero, zero is probably fine. Well, it looks like it's still, zero, zero, zero would still kind of take you off the Even more. side. Okay. Right? Maybe we should turn more to starboard. Yeah, more to starboard. I'm going to push out some. Maybe like a zero one zero. Yeah. Okay. That's what it looks like to All me. Right. What do you think, Dave? Yeah. Zero one zero, zero is fine. Zero. What's this guy up here? All right, Bridge, back with you. We're going to do 30 meters. That's three zero yeah, meters, bearing zero one zero. Well, zero. well That's there's one object two. left and one right. Uh, Both of the, whatever is easiest first. You got it. Okay. I'm not picking up the one you're seeing to the left. What is it? I see this bright orange one ahead. Yeah, let's try that. All right. Interesting feature there in Sirius. Yeah, there's a pretty good okay. line visible in Sirius view. Yeah. So now if we have uh, plenty of thruster power to do this, but the controller is a little confused on so needing to go well past to get it to move. Yeah. Okay, video, go ahead. Let's go in a little bit. And it's starfish buried. Or brittle and stars. we're seeing a nice example there of the uh, star-shaped uh, impression in the seafloor and then a partially buried uh, brittle star or, or sea star uh, down within that impression. Yeah. So that kind of... You can go Links back the organism to those impressions we've been seeing. Stable. Okay, I yeah. gotta come in further. And then, pilot, uh, there, there was something. Yeah, I think we got a good enough. Oh, okay. this. So All there's right. something just left of us. Okay. And just do a quick snap zoom. See it yet or no? Nope, still left. More right. left. Okay. Yeah, it might have moved. Uh, I thought it was very distinctive. What was it? What did it look like? I thought it was a fish, but oh. yeah, it might be a mistake. Yeah. Yeah. It's not that between the lasers? No. Right, not, okay. Yeah, we, we can move on. Okay. Copy that. Thanks, pilot. So one loop pulled through, maybe. <clears throat> I could see that, like, could be a loop that's on the inside and isn't part of the tape and just gets pulled out. Yeah. I think, well, another thing is that, like, if you try to do too many loops of the daisy chain on the BSR, it's not real tight. It's a very loose, right? Whereas if you do like three loops and then pull it tight from three quarters up the way to the BSR up to the clip, then. Well, it's from the sausage, but I think if, you know, if the daisy chain were tighter too, it might help hold it in place. Because then we saw a loop in the daisy chain this morning. Yeah, let's um, try to get a so quick snap. that allowed that. the uh, lift go ahead, to video. get pulled through. Dave, you want to take my camera, please? I'm trying to hold this here. Uh, upper right. So it looks like a couple of buried okay. bryozoans there, okay. or partially buried. And then. In the daisy chain or the lift line? Yeah, let me see if I can get stable here.
tip up. Down, go ahead. So Sirius is on the move here. Yeah, okay. Up. Tilt up. There you go. So I think we're looking at a Brian Zellin. Okay. Dying sponge. Oh no, yes. Yeah, Scott agrees Tip that Brian Zone. All right, that that's that's great. Thank you. Okay. Okay. All right, video when you're done. Okay. Uh, so I need to move out. Yep. Yeah. Come up okay. and push forward. Coming up, pushing forward. Yeah, thank you. Dave. Zero one zero up was our header. As yeah. he's coming up. Oh yeah, a big one down there, isn't there? Another big loop. <coughs> There's a, a second loop? There's a second loop oh just off screen there. Yeah. like the uh, ship has stopped okay <clears throat> but you need to come up and push out yeah that's what I'm doing now so he's coming up Dave okay As a time check, we have a little over 45 minutes remaining in this dive. Video, you want to zoom in here, please? It's a good copy bridge, thanks. Video, quick zoom. Copy video. Zoom in, please. Is this anything we want to stop on? Uh, watch leader. Keep going. Yeah, I think uh, we can uh, keep going. Okay. okay straight down on you again. The ship, okay. the ship move is complete. Uh, okay, video, go back wide again, please. Okay, I'm coming up and pushing ahead, Dave. Okay. 
All right. Oh, Video is going to be swapping out. Okay, copy that. Uh, Nav, watch lead. Nav, watch lead is calling you. Sorry, watch lead. Can you speak up a little more? I'll turn you up too. Let's get moving. Don, I'm looking back at you. Uh, okay. We're just uh, 40 to 50 meters now. Uh, so yeah, here we have another Venus flytrap anemone. So this is in the family Hormitheidae. Uh, we did get a, some good image of the of the of this species earlier. Pretty hard return at uh, maybe zero three zero zero four five from us. Okay, well, that's about my heading now. Uh, okay. So we are turn toward that. I'll about 40 m meters away uh, from our waypoint nice. three, so I hope. Uh, What's the range on that, Dave? Oh, uh, 15 meters from oh, me. Okay. Yep, Sirius should be just about settled out now, so. Okay. And I have changed my heading to follow you a bit. Okay. Zero three five. I'll go to zero four five, same as Come yours. Up on the camera. So Sirius is looking right into the slope at zero four five. Yes. Yeah, if you want to maybe lateral the port a bit as you're coming up. Yeah. Is the current blowing you over there? Or were you driving no, we were trying to get over there to see some sonar target. Gotcha. No, I was lateraling hard to starboard there. But all I got to do is let off and the current will bring me back here. Okay, so that target's uh, right in front of me now. Okay. Should be coming up on it. All right. There's three loops. Yes. Very loose there. Does it look like the tape is still holding on the BSR? Yeah, it looks like the tape is on there, but the lift line is just, you know, slipping through it. Yeah. See the daisy chain is pretty loose at the end yep. of the BSR. Of course, the loops don't come up when I'm trying to take a picture. Sonar targets just the top. <laughs> yeah, we should just about be there. 
Uh, we don't have the precision in the tracking right, right. to know exactly where we're at, but um, we're close. So it sounds like uh, Nav just notified us we're approaching waypoint three. That is correct. And so uh, the way we position this over our uh, surveyed bathymetry is it should be up around the uh, rim of the canyon, if you will, to the edge of the canyon where things start to move flat. So I think rather than moving forward uh, with the time remaining, uh, our goal would be to move out along this uh, this edge, either to the west or the east. Yeah. Uh, I think so we've I think got a ability to, to do either. So, so if you want to tend to the port side. Okay. Yeah, we'll let the um, the pilot, navigator, and co-pilot decide what's going to be yeah, most I advantageous for the, uh, from the from the engineering well, standpoint. I think uh, you know we could. I think they just want to kind of keep. We could. Keep moving uphill slightly, right. but start moving northwest. Yeah, yeah we only not, have I'm not we sure only have 35 minutes left okay. of bottom time, so. It's not sure that we're actually. Yeah. There. Well, actually, this is Nav. Go ahead, Nav. Yeah, so we're gonna uh, do as we discussed earlier and, and tend toward the uh, north uh, west along the edge of the canyon wall. So you're looking at uh still want to go a little bit further yeah. to the north, I think. Yeah. Too. So we can kitty corner up the slope here. Okay. I mean we could even do like due north, due north. or close to it. Okay. okay. I'll turn uh, back maybe like a north a little bit. Zero two zero. We can split the difference there. Okay. I'll go ahead and call it in since you're stretched out. Sure. And my heading's about on that now. Bridge, this is Let's RV Nav. See, can we get to that burrow or no? Uh, I could come down a little bit. Okay. Some tether. Yeah, we'd like to request a move 30 meters, 30 meters, bearing 020 at 0 decimal 2 knots. That's correct. Video, can you give me a partial zoom on Sirius camera? Absolutely. That's great. About there. Thank you. Roger. Seeing quite a large burrow here up along the edge of the canyon. Looks possibly have two entrances. Good copy. Yep. I don't see anybody home there. Well, there's something in the smaller one, looks like. Video, you want to give me a... Oops. Let me back up a bit. Go zoom in. Absolutely. Uh, oh no, okay. It's partial. Yeah, okay, that's good. Thank you. I thought I saw. Yeah, it looks like a, just a tube worm right yeah, at the end. Yeah, tube entrance. worm, that's what well, it was. It's just half an hour left okay. in the dive, so we'll just. All right, you can go wide on video. It. What do you see? Oh, really? Let's get Carl in here. Why don't you need to back up, Don? Yep, backing up. And let's back, yeah, back up hard and uh, up. a lateral to starboard as well. Let's go ahead and get the swing arm stood. That's good. Maybe, uh, okay, watch just... lead. What's happening here is we're dealing with a loop in the tether. I don't know if you saw it on the Sirius view, but that's why we're coming back out off the bottom. Okay. Okay, why don't you just try to hold yourself steady there, yep. Don? Maybe come up on the winch a bit. Uh, 
Dave, yeah. just a touch. Uh, uh, just to update our, our shore base team here. So uh, the engineering team is just uh, dealing with a loop in the tether. Uh, so that's why we came up to, yeah. off of the substrate. Uh, we do have just just under 30 minutes remaining on this dive. So can uh, we, uh, yeah, I think you need to fight the current a bit. And, mm -hmm. uh, so Try the to plan stay is centered once we'll come uh, off the surface uh, close to 3 o'clock central time, we'll take a short 20 break, meters up right now. and then we'll um, have our uh, our planning so let's, let's call to, to go discuss more of a delta tomorrow's dive uh, site. So uh, again, that's so going to, to be a diving uh, on Hidalgo view. Basin. Uh, Pushing ahead. Yeah. Uh, that and if we can get site eyes was on the, uh, uh, on the uh, loop. proposed by the team at the Flower Garden Banks National Marine Sanctuary. Uh, it is outside the sanctuary, but it's, uh, it's one of the areas that has been proposed for a potential expansion of the, uh, the sanctuary under Alternative 5. And um, uh, the, de the depths are going to be slightly shallower, so about uh, 1,100 meters are or so. You, uh, uh, it is an video, area are you that zoomed in on Sirius or uh, wide? No, nope. uh, nope. we're wide. Okay, thank you. Hopefully we'll be able to... So dive every, on our everything's, first chemosynthetic you know, we're safer habitat. Enough. So yesterday so we're off the bottom. Uh, we dove on a, on a mount um, and we were hoping to see some chemosynthetic to uh, on the, on the loop. communities. Uh, uh, but we unfortunately were not able to um, and then, yeah, uh, to record those. Try to maintain uh, right but, here. Uh, you got uh, auto as depth we had discussed during yesterday's yep. dive, so a lot of these uh, seams over. can be um, pretty ephemeral or, or transient features. Uh, sometimes turning on and so off. Where, was uh, it closer to Sirius or you know, closer to D2? Short time scales. The loop. I think it was closer. And of course, they need to, to be D2, right? Over, over longer time scales for them to so attract. Thought. All right. So Don's pretty safe Chemo right now. So why don't we try to find it? That's right. And a lot of these, we see uh, sort of a short-term ephemerality of individual plumes. Try to keep yourself. But uh, in terms of a location, the they have so venting exactly. over. Uh, many thousands of years, and uh, Turn off the scientists, some yeah. of the yeah. carbonate rocks so you can see the uh, from seeps the in the yeah. Atlantic so Ocean that have been age dated indicate that some of those have been persistent in their general location and, uh, uh, on the order of take eyes off maybe 15,000 so years back to the last glacial maximum down. almost. So, uh, uh, so we do see some uh, persistent venting in individual locations, and for a lot of these locations, uh, the source of that gas is going to be. Uh, you know, subsurface gas, and that, that can be charged that. across an area. So we can see oftentimes a lot of plumes associated with each other across a, yep. a plume field. And where they individually okay. come out is sometimes uh, just a result of localized geology where you might have a fracture okay. in the rock or a fault that opens up a pathway for that gas uh, to move to the surface. Uh, so that's something we'll be you looking for in tomorrow's D2 dive. We'll, uh, and, of course, the tether. Uh, as Dale mentioned, very unique communities there, chemosynthetic communities. Can you see so it in the Titan? Uh, uh, synthesis of okay. uh, chemicals, the basis of bit. the uh, yeah. Why don't you do that? Uh, the food chain in those environments, or the food web. So, uh, uh, very Looks unique like type uh, ecosystems. Uh, and so we'll oh, hopefully look forward there to seeing that is. on uh, yeah. tomorrow's dive. Yeah, and then so some of the different um, so communities like that have been documented on this, uh, it's of course dependent on the, the rate uh, of, of, of seeps and then also what the, the primary gases are coming out of there, whether that's uh, primarily it's methane or, D2. or hydrogen uh, sulfide. Um, so bacterial mats being kind of the first colonizers of some of these uh, environments. And then we have so bassy mediolas. Um, this. Mussels and then uh, two worms. Uh, the loop is over. And uh, to going back to your point about yeah, the, the transient so nature, so there are some uh, two worms, uh, chemosynthetic. To starboard, uh, right? That have been dated to or, or estimated to be about 400 yeah, years or so in age, so being in the, the same bottom. place. And then some of these are, are quite large, they can be uh, several meters yeah, in, just in height. Just on your delta and your. Uh, Looks like you're getting stretched yeah, out. Yeah, a hopefully bit. Um, uh, we'll be able to, to document some of those uh, communities tomorrow. And so that's uh, on the Thank you. It's just on the radar for tomorrow. Uh, we do have a lengthy transit line, from here like. uh, to uh, Hidalgo Basin. We're about a 120 uh, plus nautical miles away. So as soon as we come up, uh, we'll start steaming uh, that way uh, so that we can be on site. Um, first thing in the morning, 
uh, so we won't be able to, to do much mapping uh, or any mapping, um, but we do have really good multi-beam of the area. And so, yeah, that will be uh, tomorrow's dive, so that was going to be targeting again about 1,000 meters, and then the day after tomorrow, um, uh, we'll be diving on a uh, mud volcano at about 2,500 meters. And mud volcanoes can host uh, chemosynthetic communities as well. So we hope to see some very unique biology uh, around those mud volcanoes. We can sometimes see hard grounds as well. So, turn to so starboard, uh, we'll be looking forward to that, that, would, uh, that as well. That would, uh, hopefully, you know, uh, well what I think we're going to want to end up doing there. is just turn to starboard and push out and get in tow configuration, right? Yeah. Because if I turn to starboard, to take the half a turn hopefully out there to now. get that half a turn out and stretch out kind of pull straight yeah we've done we've tried this before sometimes it's successful sometimes it's not yep okay well yeah we definitely need to come to starboard so And just to update those following on shore, we're uh, our back engineering back, team but is a little bit still working on troubleshooting a minor issue with no, the you're uh, fine. tether just on getting, the vehicle. No, and, I'm just getting uh, us back as in. As we continue to do that, we're going to stand by, and uh, so we'll update as we uh, receive more there. information. Stop in there. As we're waiting, I can talk a little bit about uh, some of the sedimentary deposits we saw today. We started the day talking about uh, turbidity flows and, and how uh, sediment mixed with water near the seafloor can uh, form a dense slurry that runs down slope and cuts canyons and runs out many kilometers across the abyssal plain on the seafloor. And um, of course, these are interesting from a geological standpoint, but they're also something that uh, the uh, oil and gas industry takes into account. This can be a, a way that organic material is transferred from closer to shore, uh, farther out in, into the deeper basins. And ultimately, it is organic material mixing with the sediments. Once it okay, gets Bobby, buried, well, that forms uh, oil and natural gas. Yeah. And of course, Back there's up. a and large Dave's amount of oil and natural heading. gas reserves You're underneath the Gulf of Mexico. Death, uh, this organic material uh, can be things like detritus uh, that's carried up. to the ocean we by rivers and streams it. from the we continent. Uh, most of it, however, of though, so is organic material of organisms that live in the ocean minutes, and die, mostly planktonic organisms, and they fall to the seafloor. Um, uh, that material is called anything, sapropel, uh, we, we reached and the top. it uh, gets mixed in with the sediment, for top of and then over the course um, of millions of years, we just buried. And as sediments pile on top of it, it gets pushed farther down. Uh, into the earth and in order for oil and natural gas to form it has to reach uh, an exact temperature uh, if it goes too deep uh, into the earth it can get too hot and, and get overcooked and if it doesn't go deep enough it, it never really turns into kerogen which is the the precursor to oil and natural gas but if it gets just in the right temperature window uh, it does turn into this kerogen which is sort of a waxy type material it's a precursor to petroleum oil and natural gas and once that carriage forms, uh, as it continues to age, it will uh, can differentiate into liquid uh, oil and uh, gas. And uh, that's the material that, that feeds these gas heaps we're talking about. That, uh, in some cases, that can be, that's what we call thermogenic natural gas that can come back to the seafloor through fractures and cracks. Uh, and of course, we have a lot of those in these areas where we see salt tectonics, so a lot of pathways for 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 gas to the surface and these can also be pathways for oil and where that gas comes out at the surface we can get things like mud volcanoes and uh, gas seeps and where the oil comes out we oh. can get asphalt flows so that's where oil naturally flows out into the sea floor oftentimes those flows solidify into sort of a, a semi-hard black tar-like substance that we call asphalt flows 
Uh, all of these Watch lead. This uh, is now. can stand by. Just letting you know that uh, we have a plan to uh, try to deal with this loop in the tether. And, uh, hey, Dave, might let's take, uh, both come up few some. Minutes to sure. sort this Just out. Come easy in this config. And if we can do it quick enough, and we ha feel we have enough time come to go down to bottom, we will do so. Um, but we'll keep you updated. So just conveying an update, the uh, engineers continue to work, um, and depending on how quickly they resolve the issue they're dealing with, uh, we may return to the seafloor and continue for a few more minutes in the dive, uh, or, or it all depends on uh, how quickly they can address uh, right, their minor tether issue bit. here, and uh, we'll keep you updated on shore uh, when that occurs. Yeah, let me catch up. So, uh, Actually, that's, that was as I mentioned, that organic that material under uh, under lots of compression of lots of overlying sediment and, and some heating can turn into natural gas and oil, and, and those can lead to these reserves of natural gas and oil, of course, which uh, the industry is seeking out right, in the Gulf of there. Mexico, yeah, but also locations where they're naturally can. released from the, the seafloor. Okay. And uh, so can these upcoming two more? dives are going to potentially illustrate okay, to two situations where we have natural gas yeah, seeping from the seafloor. And we'll get to see the yeah, uh, sort of the geological and biological results of, of that process. Okay, turn right, I'm going to come out. Like uh, you like our delta right now? Yeah, 15 is fine. Good. I have eyes on it in both cameras. Yeah, we've had it before where we've tried that and gotten nowhere though. So we'll we'll try it. Okay, see myself going out of fisheye. I've lost it in Titan. Okay, I have it back in Titan. I'm not going to have any light on it though. As so we stand by here for this engineering work, I also wanted to note that uh, coming up in that, I think three uh, or maybe uh, four dives, uh, we're going to do uh, tether, a water column out, dive. That's where we're going to spend the extent of the day heading, up off the seafloor, surveying organisms in the water column. One of the things that Daniel and I have both mentioned over the course of this expedition is that it's kind of amazing. A vast majority of the Earth's surface is the deep sea. And we know very little about it, but even that Fibers very little we know fine. is almost completely focused on the deep sea floor. Uh, so we really have absolutely I mean, right limited knowledge tank, yeah. about what's in the deep sea, but above the sea floor. So those are the organisms that live up the, uh, off the sea floor, but well below the surface. And so on the big screen uh, part of the video. initiative that NOAA has been working on is to start right. to incorporate right. midwater right. surveys into our exploration we'll work the, uh, so that we have a chance to move absolutely. up uh, many hundreds of meters off the sea floor and begin right to survey the organisms that live there. We see cnidarians, uh, uh, tinafores, um, uh, variety of jellies and uh, Oops, and so we're going to look forward to in a few dives uh, a little bit different kind of exploration we we'll go. hope you all you will all That's tune in and, and join us for that work uh, and, and get a bit of a taste as we have uh, right, folks so like Mike Ford and, and uh, Amanda sort of Netburn who are there. some of our shoreside experts Monitor in midwater right. organisms uh, uh, join uh, us to uh, help lead those dives. Well, uh, right series of umbilical Pisces. LDS. Here, I'll go. Yeah, uh, Adam, so that'll be yep. a nice uh, kind of uh, uh, add some diversity to our to our dives here. Uh, so that will be coming up uh, three days from uh, from today. So on April 21st, we'll have a full mi this mi midwater uh, dive. Seen this before. Uh, after that, we have a couple more um, C4 uh, dives uh, targeting uh, 
different areas that are also considered for expansion of the flower garden banks. Oh, this is Sanctuary. video. I will pull that camera. Uh, a couple. Uh, well, moment. one is uh, oh, what we believe is a, like a, a, dip a good habitat a for corals. The other loop. is a um, yep. more targeted right. chemosynthetic communities. Right. And uh, for those of you who are uh, who are following along, the first couple of dives uh, on video, April 24th, okay. uh, we you. will have our, our third archaeological dive. Uh, targeting Ooh. another <laughs> uh, shipwreck, uh, so that will Maybe be a, uh, another level. very dramatic dive. That's not bad. And um, that will then take Maybe us to the last week of the expedition, where we'll, we'll start uh, working our way uh, along oh, the West the Florida escarpment. That will include a, a series of dives targeting Florida hard ground, so this is a, a different, very different environment. So we have there are really steep slopes and um, definitely a lot of hard ground. There'll be uh, several dives that are going to be targeting uh, depths between 2 to 2,500 meters. Um, and uh, we'll yeah, also have like a, uh, a couple dives targeting slightly shallower depths. Like so yeah, uh, skinnier just in the, the shallow the range of the, that escarpment. And those are going to be targeting areas where we believe uh, there are uh, dense aggregations of um, uh, deep uh, sea hermatypic or reef building corals. Uh, most of these are in the yeah, uh, Ophelia pertusa, but also some Madrapara yeah, oculata aggregations. And uh, weather permitting and uh, currents permitting, uh, we'll hope to have the last couple of days uh, spending um, you know, of the expedition being uh, right off Key West. Uh, so this is an area around the Pulley Ridge uh, and Portales Terrace. Uh, this is an area that's uh, notoriously difficult to, to get to because of really, really strong surface currents. Um, it looks twisted, but not and, uh, like so we hope over that, itself, um, right? Like it kind of does a curly We get a couple cube. dives in there. Um. And so by the end of this expedition, we should have a, a really nice uh, diversity of different environments surveyed. And uh, and this is also uh, in large part thanks to the the community. Um, several, uh, many people submitted proposals for different areas to be so targeted during this expedition, uh, and we had uh, proposals from very very different disciplines and different kind of management perspectives. And we really appreciate everyone submitting those proposals, and then also. Um, helping with the planning, uh, attending several of the planning calls. That's starting to look better, evening out. Uh, and here's another sea cucumber. And so, yeah, this expedition will end on May 3rd in Key West. Uh, the Okeanos will then just have a short import and will then have a, a mapping-only expedition uh, that will take the, uh, the ship around uh, Florida. And then Auto in uh, June, uh, June 6th to 27th, the Okanos Explorer will yeah, have south. another ROV explor uh, exploration expedition my, uh, uh, going from Charleston, off. South Carolina yep. to Norfolk. Exploring it, we'll uh, some yep. areas yep. in the South Atlantic Bight. Oh. Come back here and send uh, me up. And then uh, later in the season, yeah, uh, there'll be up. another mapping expedition around Bermuda. Perfect. And then finishing it all up uh, will be in August, uh, a final ROV expedition uh, targeting um, mostly areas off uh, the northeast United States and Canada. And this is to su yeah, support a, a partnership to. I think we were better off when you were out of Autohead. Study so. uh, the deep sea, both in Canada and take you out of auto head, sorry. Uh, American, as well as international and European waters. Uh, part of the Galway Agreement close, uh, well. for Atlantic cooperation. It's like that. It's getting uh, so very exciting field season ahead. And, uh, for those of you, you sure? who would like to keep it engaged much. and yeah, follow sure along, uh, yeah. updates yeah, are of course uh, the best updates. And most the updated section. information can be found on the Ocean Explorer uh, .noaa .gov uh, slash Okeanos website. Uh, a lot of very valuable information, uh, useful information to both uh, the scientific community to the uh, also for outreach and education. So there's some really wonderful education materials up there. Yeah. 
and also uh, slack and tighten, slack and uh, tighten. Provides uh, some of the.